Yeah. Both of us, really. I mean, we both get Ladies on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Bussin' with the Boys. This is episode number? 200-something. 200 229? 229? Let's, let's, uh, let's talk about something near and dear to our hearts. You know we're truck guys through and through, and the Chevy Silverado is a partner with unstoppable grit and determination. It's been our most valuable truck, and now... Their first ever all-electric Silverado joins the franchise. We got a chance to see these things in action. Let me tell you something. It is an absolute game changer. Available 400-mile range GM estimated on a full charge. Over 10 feet of length in the bed with the Multiflex tailgate combined with the Multiflex midgate. Large 17-inch diag diagonal display screen. Mm. It can tow up to 10,000 pounds of max towing. Zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Had the boys 40 times. <laughs> With wow mo up to an impressive 785 foot feet foot foot pounds of torque. Head over, head over to Chevy.com to learn more. Boys. Team Chevy would be ecstatic to know we walked into a room yesterday sponsored by a different brand. Different brand. With and we we stayed 10 toes down, <sighs> talked a little shit, and told everybody to get their ass in the new Chevy EV. Yeah. They'd They're, be proud of us. Yeah. Without we, saying what the brand. We did a QA. And a gentleman was talking to us and said, says something about a vehicle with a horse. And I looked this man in the eye and said, there's no fucking chance. I didn't say fucking because there's a lot of people in those kids. There's no chance I would ever be caught in a vehicle like that. Mm. We are Chevy guys Beautiful through and through. Said. Then I then I took the moment to tell them about the new EV yeah. that you can actually test drive right now. It so, is a dream. It is a dream. <clears throat> it is a dream. You know what else is a dream, dude? Kevin Byard, the mayor of Murfreesboro, has come on this podcast he, it was an electric time. The minute this pod started, it was war stories. It was fun times. It was, remember this, when this happened, remember when that happened? Oh, I hate when this happens. Oh, OTAs is like this, camps like this, dude. It was elite. And we hit that, what, last week? Yeah, we hit it last week as KB. If everybody, all the OGs out there who's been a day one with this, KB was like a first five, seven podcast. Number, number eight. eight. Okay, number eight. Number eight. He's a number eight pod. Top ten. Yeah, and he kind of checked us on why he hasn't been on in a minute, but yeah. all good. Yeah. It, it was a fucking awesome time, man. Like, variable stories, year one variable stories versus the way variable is. Like, it, it's, it is a good time. Yeah. It is a fucking good time. If you're, not, if you're a Tennessee fan, you're going to absolutely love this. But if you're about listening to locker room stories and everything else, like, this is the episode. If you like football, you're going to love this podcast. Right, right. But the boys had a crazy week last weekend. Boys, it's just getting crazier and crazier. The week, opening a bar stool, the boys were out there. Oh, yeah, boys were out there. A line was literally wrapped around the fucking block. We were, I think it was supposed to be just like an hour, hour and a half. I think we were there for over two hours. Barstool Bar's got a shot. Bar they got a shot to make got it. got a shot. It's open. Yeah, open concept, four bars, the indoor, outdoor. Off Broadway, off of Broadway or around yeah. downtown. Massive, very competent bar. I haven't been to all the bars on Broadway. I probably have, but not in a long time. This might be the most well-put-together bar on Broadway, everything's thought of, dude. If you're in the fall and you're in, and you're on Broadway and you're thinking, where can I watch the big game? Go into the Barstool Bar. There's enough TVs for each person in that damn bar, and there's gonna be live music playing, VIP tables, table service. That's a new concept in Nashville. And busting with the boys tailgates. And busting with the boys tailgates. There's gonna be that's a new concept in Nashville. Is the whole like VIP bottle service thing. Your boy group in Arizona and Scottsdale, Arizona. There's that's all you get there down in Old Town. Every single bar you go to, there's bottle service with the sparklers and the Twizzlers and all that. People do that. I know another bar, I'm not going to say their name, but they do it oh, for sure near, near Broadway. This is kind of like the second one in on the Broadway scheme that kind of does the bottle service. Cool thing. We'll see how it works out for them in that way, but I have no doubt that bar will be extremely yeah, it's successful. It's also like a good mix too. Like again, the biggest stage in downtown Nashville. Like they're going to have, they're going to have singers there, performers there. I think that's where it's going to, that's that's the make or break right there, bringing in yeah. that talent because it is a it's it's a nice bar. It's a nice bar. Again, wide time. open. It's got like a half kind of rooftop up top. Right. Uh, and, and it's not right. What what street is that off of? Like I know it's off second of Broadway. Street. I know it's off of Broadway. Street. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not like in the thick to where you're shoulder to shoulder with all the fucking with the griminess down there. Yeah. That can be on Broadway. Right. You're just far enough away to be like, okay, I'm I'm having a good fucking yeah, time. Yeah. But an easy walk. You see it. It's yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the spectacle and then come to the fun bar. Yeah. And then at the fun bar, I know there's probably going to be an ad read at some point. We haven't read the ads for this podcast yet, but boys, the biggest it's been announced. The biggest move coming out of last week. The boys have now partnered. It is official. We are the Twisted Kings. We're partnered with Twisted Tea, but the bus is wrapped. I'm sure you guys have seen the photos. If not, I'm sure they'll pop up right now on the YouTube. Right. If you're watching YouTube, comment. Comment. But, comment, subscribe. Hey, the Twisted Kings, 
Twisted Kings are really, truly out here, dude. And I, we control alt deleted a few of these things during this meet and greet. And let me tell you, every single time it went down smooth. It tastes from the first sip to the last sip, Twisted Tea truly tastes delicious. Oh, what do we have it's here? Amazing right here. What? The boys are about to keep it twisted all summer with Twisted Tea. Tastes like real, think real iced tea because it's made with real brewed tea, meaning it's absolutely delicious. When you think summer, it's hot, just like it was at fucking NASCAR. Absolutely craving an iced tea, an iced Twisted Tea. Real brewed tea with a kick. 5% ABV, full flavor and very refreshing. Twisted Tea turns up the heat on any occasion, making it the perfect product for any summer occasion, daytime, nighttime, nighttime. Doesn't matter. Pull side, get you a twisted tea. Mm. Goes down smooth. There's zero carbonation, which makes makes it easy to drink all day long. Not to mention football season, the best product to sip on while you're watching your favorite team. Twisted tea feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. Twisted tea is the perfect alcohol beverage for game day. Whether you're tailgating in a lot, watching at a bar, bar still bar, watching with friends at home, twisted tea is there to turn up your game day. Keep it twisted, boys. Grab a twisted, refreshing tea today. Anywhere you can get them, I think, mm. pretty much fucking everywhere. And but there's no, there's no secret that when the boys get a big partner, we sell the fuck out. We sell the fuck out for our the people that believe in us. And this is going to be no different. This thing might be kicked on steroids in a fucking hurry. There's going to be a, some 2019 Lawan going on here with this twisted tea. We are going to be going absolutely nuts on this fall tour with twisted tea. If I see you and you try to chug a beer with me, I might kick you in the balls. You come up to me with a twisted tea, it's on site, brother. It is on site at the fall tour. I hope to God. Let's we're taking down everybody. We're taking down everyone with a twisted tea, and then we'll see where that goes from there, brother. Oh, yeah, I love the energy. I fucking love the it's energy. It's gonna right be now. fucking Olympics. It, oh, Olympics. I read that Speaking on the thing. Olympics, we I'll are tell you what. People are watching right now. While you're watching, I know there's those ride or dies, those tier ones here that pop on the 6 a.m. And we appreciate the fuck out of you. And you're probably watching this right now, and your heart's Fucking moving a little faster because I'm talking about you, brother, as you're leaving comments and telling your boys about it. Beer Olympics is out today. At noon, we will kick off to find out who is the greatest drinker over the greatest genres in entertainment. We're talking about musicians. We're talking about comedians, NFL players, NHL players, comedians. It is truly, we have called in every single favor, scaved, looked through the globe, gone across to Russia during a, a civil war, mind you, through the forest, found the best drinkers, brought their asses over to America on a visa, and we are going pound for pound, toes to toe with everybody, and we're coming out victorious. I can almost fucking guarantee it, but any given Tuesday, am I right? Brother, you are getting the blood flowing below the belt right now. I woke up today, dude. I put this on. It reminded me of, of high school football, dude, on a Friday. Friday night lights, you put your own jersey on. You can smell the fall weather right you, now. You take it's your cool you, breeze. You go up to that girl you're talking to. You don't know what you guys are yet. You haven't defined the relationship. You haven't You've DTR'd. Only, you dry humped a couple times. Yeah, you kind of had a weird, awkward make out, like grinding the denim on her a little bit at a party that a couple yeah, Saturdays ago. Sometimes it's tough. In the jeans, but brother, that callus is going to make you last a little longer in the long run. That's a little gift for you guys out there. You go to her with your practice jersey. You say, you want to wear this? You go there in the middle of the week. He's also wearing that. Brother, you're in there. So I put this bitch on today, and I'm feeling... I know. I'm I, feeling I fucking I ready, dog. The team unis of I am brother. so excited. We'll have the headbands, the pit vipers, the twisted tee jersey, which will come out, come off very quickly. It's going to be a hot, sunny, sunny day tomorrow. So I cannot wait to get catch myself a nice tan. It's not brutally hot like it was in NASCAR. 87, sunny. 80, it'll be four degrees cooler than it was yesterday. Just saying. That, yeah. that was a different animal. That humidity mm. was like 400%. But, brother, we live in this heat. The men and women coming in to join this festivities, they're not used to this heat. They will be put in a blender by event two, and that's where we will start to thrive. We will use the adversity <sighs> to help us. That I'm, is what's going to happen. Brother, I'm ready. I, I bet you, know you are. When the lights come on, it's... Dude. Speaking of lights came on, dude, yesterday we were at NASCAR, and it, let me tell you what, the, the whole Talladega Nights, the fucking roaring of the engine, that's a real fucking deal, man. Those, it is, not only was it so hot, I got to assume in, the, in those NASCARs, they don't have the best AC units in there, am I right? They're not rocking AC units. They probably don't have a camel back with the little, the straw with the water. Those boys are going 400, 500 miles, whatever it is. The ally... 400 is what, what it was. I had a hard time dialing that in. Saw a bunch of people from Barstool, Spider, and Large were by far the most excited to be there. Yeah, yeah. By far the most excited to be there. But it, all, I mean, Spider, 
knows everybody. I'm talking the drivers, the pit crew, anybody. If you're rolling tires, he knows you. They're all like, hey, Spotter, what's up? Yeah. He's hugging everybody. Hugging Large, everyone. hey, I, you got to meet this guy. You got to meet this guy. He's giving you background. He's giving you context. All of a sudden, you're shaking hands with a fucking uh, Unit. bounty hunter. Yeah. You know what Who's I mean? bounty hunter guy. Juiced up. Talk about him. Paul Swan. Paul Swan, Paul Swan dude. Swan. You saw the boy. Was he's not? Do you mind if I go ahead? Will man. tells because I didn't go to NASCAR last year. I was in Canada. Will tells me about this gentleman, Paul Swan. He's like, dude, good looking cat, built like a brick shit house, got a fade, the whole thing. Literally selling this guy over and over and over again for an entire year. We're talking about 365. Now, last week, Will kept talking about, I can't wait to see Swanee. I can't wait to see Swanee, blah, blah, blah. We get there. Paul Swan, I know you're a big, big Boston fan. You were everything and more that will uh, uh, describe you as. Because that, that shit doesn't energy? happen. Was that energy just was not a fucking elite. elite? He like fucking transfers it to your body. Dude. It does. He really does. He pulled out. He fucking ripped it. He had the two chains dangling, the, the hair coming out, that strong jawline, beautiful green eyes. Strong eyebrows. Beautiful strong green eyes. Eyebrow. Just, and the hair just doesn't lose form, but just got that nice little got a bounce Johnny to it. Bravo bounce. Yeah, it does, dude. Overall, man. That was a, you, very rarely do you hype somebody up and they meet that expectation. That man met that expectation. I love that. That does fire me up. Yeah. That does fire me up. Should we, uh, let's hit Because we, we said we swore to ourselves. 15 minutes. We would not do a long intro so yeah. people could listen we have to four Kevin minutes. Byard. Yeah, so people could uh, listen to Kevin Byard, which is a phenomenal podcast. And because we got to go set up for Beer Olympics, which is, this is being recorded on yesterday. It is now Tuesday. We got to go set up. So, saying that. Let's get to our favorite segment. Shout out, no free shout out, and pet peeves. I hope you have your couple. Mitch is going to do a shout out, no free shout out, and Jack, Jackie boy back there is going to do his pet peeve. But let's get shout out, no free shout out kicked off. Mitch, what do you have for the people, brother? My shout out, no free shout out this week goes to um, some of the guys around here know that I've sort of been struggling mentally the last couple last couple days, um, just going through something per like in my personal life, not the most fun thing. But the overwhelming support, like from like the boys around, like uh, like of, all of us, my friends, like hey, if you need to talk to somebody, I'm here. Like I'm here for you. Like it sucks everything, da da da. But like we're here for you if you ever need to talk about anything. Just just letting you know that we're here. My shout out, no free shout out, goes to those friends that they have your back no matter what. When you're going through something that sucks and you're like just super down on yourself. Those boys that have your back and be like, yo, if you need to talk about anything, I'm here for you. Like, I got you. So respect to all those boys. Love y'all. Love you guys. It's awesome. I, pre I appreciate it a lot. Hell yeah, Mitch. It's hard to go through things alone. But when you have a good crew around you to kind of lift you up, dude, it does soften the blow a little bit. We're all thinking about Mitchie right now. Not going to talk about it, right? We're not going to talk about it. But we do know, hey, smooth seas. They ever made a skilled sailor, brother. You're going to be better coming out of this one. You want to go? You want me to go? Uh, yeah, my shout out, no free shout out, is going to go to, and it's been, we had tight in you last week. We had the bar still bar. We've had a lot of things going on, a lot of energy being given everywhere. Long days. Wife was out of town last week, so I'm watching. I'm on dad duty when I get home, all that kind of stuff. NASCAR last night, all the things. My shout out, no free shout out, is when them legs are fucking exhausted. You feel them ankles, you feel them joints, you feel them knees, you feel that inflammation. You're ready to get off your feet. And my shout out is when them legs are laying comfortably in them bamboo sheets. Mm. When you're taking that load off and you're just laying there and you're just so thankful to be in your bed and you're, you feel the exhaustedness of your legs, but it's almost like a comfortable feeling because they're so exhausted. Yeah. That is my shout-out, no free shout-out. That's a great shout-out, no free shout-out. My shout-out, no free shout-out is going to go to when someone's talking shit and you have the ability to put them in their fucking place. When you are able to silence somebody after they've used all the words, said all the things of what they're going to do to you, and you shut them the fuck up. And I did not do this myself, but I witnessed it at tight end U when Will Compton beat the fuck out of Billy football. And when Billy was talking mad trash from the minute we saw him, until his unfortunate demise as you bodied his bitch ass two separate times, not once, but twice. And in my head, I was like, man, there's nothing better when you're, like, you're on the football field with the boys at practice and someone's talking shit. And you're like, all right, line it up, line it up. And then you hem their bitch ass up. 
there's not a better feeling because everybody's yeah, because, watching. Because that's nothing but downside right there. Like, mm. it's like beating a girl in a fight. There's really no coming out of that win. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm with you. Except for when I made him take a knee and said, hey, look at yourself, brother. Get the fuck out that of is, here. That was the best because thing that happened. you were there, too. Like, when he first came up, he's, like, literally chirping. And I'm kind of like, you know, I wasn't necessarily trying to get out, you know, trying to get out there and do anything, you know. He's got the little back. You got some stuff. You know you're not warming up. You're not right. doing anything. And it's all, like you said, it's all downside for you. Right. I haven't done a speed workout. I hadn't done much running at all since the Atlanta workout the year before. So I'm thinking, like, yo, if I get got by Billy, my fucking reputation is over. Mm -hmm. But this motherfucker just keeps chirping, begging, begging. Will, please do this, do that. In the name of content, you suck, you wash. You, like, you don't want to do it because you know I'd beat your ass. And so, hey, we lined it up, dude. And your boy wasn't even, you know. You weren't even wearing cleats. You were not wearing cleats. Yeah, I was not wearing cleats. And Billy, a word to the wise, brother. Don't run a fucking fade with cleats on when you know your opponent doesn't have cleats on. Do like a f in and out. Yeah. Or just a quick out. He's going to slip. Dumbass motherfucker. Yeah, bro, like, that, the, was, the, that was his When I saw that and he ran a fade, I was like, he just watches highlights and goes, oh, that's easy. Yeah, he just, I could still do that. He sees DeAndre Hopkins go over the top yeah. off of a hand and yeah. do that. He's like, oh, that's the easiest way to get somebody. <laughs> like, brother. And dude, Raina shout fade, out Raina Fade lost because oh, you want some again? And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You didn't even do anything. Yeah. And also shout out to PFT for throwing a good ball. Like PFT could not have thrown a ball. Yeah, two good two balls. Two good balls. Couldn't have thrown the ball any better in those situations. People so you can argue about that, but the receiver, like, he's fading away from the ball. You gotta go up and get that shit. It's all about who wants it most there. Also, if the ball's underthrown, which I don't believe it was, maybe the first one was. Go back towards the defender. Right. And draw the penalty. Right. Create that's contact. That's fucking 101, dude. That's fucking 101 that's ball. 101, brother. He was out of his depths. Figure that he shit out, out dude. Depths. But in a hurry, shout out, no free shout out. Jack, oh, 16 minutes. I'm pet peeve. Pet peeve. You're pet peeve. Sorry. Pet peeve of the week. Pet peeve of the week. Pet peeve of the week. Um, are we, are we pet peeve? We're going pet peeve of the week. Uh, pet peeve of the week. It's usually late at night when you're watching TV and that remote somehow continually becomes lost. Last night, I was watching a show, mm. and I lost the remote for a sec, and I found it, it's always in a place that's so obvious, like, whether it's, like, in between a bed sheet or something, and I find it, I'm not kidding, like, four more times within an hour, I couldn't find this remote. By the fourth time, I'm just like, man, I'm just turning this fucking TV off, like, I just can't even enjoy, because the show would end, and then it's on Hulu, when it does it automatically skip to the next episode, you have to then have the remote to change it. So I'm sitting there just like, man, I just these. Li I think it was just a long day, and I, yeah. like the little things were getting to me. The so it's yeah, it's whenever you can't find the remote, it's that 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 gets under my skin. Man, how how have our like first world problems? Uh, I know mm -hmm. my, my grandfather would be sick hearing that. Yeah, hearing sick. that, bro. Dude, but also like it back then it'd be the pet peeve like your the channel thing not turning yeah or hitting the right or the one. bunny ears weren't yeah fucking just not even having and service like fucking we're on hulu it doesn't just automatically go to the next episode I'm not getting content just streamed to <laughs> me yeah, yeah. yeah shove it in my face dude <laughs> yeah. come on what are we doing yeah that is a tough deal you want me to hit shout out yeah go ahead all right my shout out no free shout out happened to me uh this past saturday it's it's just Oh, no, sorry. My pet peeve. Excuse me. I don't know why I keep messing that up. My pet peeve goes to situational awareness when you're at a cash register. I was at the Franklin factory with my family, my brother-in-law, his girlfriend, and we were waiting in line to get my daughter's acai bowls. They were bitching and whining about wanting acai bowls for the longest time. We had to get a couple things at the farmer's market. We go to get it. Now I'm waiting in line. People go up and they're in the middle of a conversation going to the cash register. That's fine. But they're talking, and then the, the person leaves, and they're waiting. I'm thinking to myself, brother, like, you're up next. Go get your order in. They finally get their order in after they realize, oh, it's our turn. Then after they check out and they pay with the card, they sit and continue to have the conversation right in front of the cash register. Now, I can't get to the cash register to order my daughter's two basic acai bowls. Mm. You know? Yeah. So just my pet peeve is get the fuck out of the way once you ordered your shit. That's it. It's simple. That's also, it. that's it. Had a couple of long days, and I was going to say, Jack, when you have a couple of long days, that's when you find out your pet peeves. <laughs> so you find them out. Yeah, the long days at the end of the days when you need to start writing down your pet peeves because yeah. everything bugs the fuck out of you. Everything. Yeah. Caffeine one hint right. I was just like, wife and I were a little chippy at each other in the car right over. And literally, at the end, like later in that day, we were like, hey, the, this morning almost got tough, huh? It was like one of those deals. We were like, we kind of went silent for a second. It was a little tight earlier, wasn't it? It was tight. Yeah. But we got, hey, we got through it. It's a strong marriage.
Go on, buddy. My pet peeve is going to be there is a war going on right now. And because I've been a little bit more public about it recently. But making sure, forgetting to take your trash bins out to the, to the end of the driveway. And I guess it goes to, it, it, the real pet peeve is me forgetting. But right now, it's going to be forgetting to take your trash out to the end of the curb. Last week, we had tight end you. We had to get the tight end you. Doing all the things. Well, again, why side of town? Your boy's head's in a blender. I'm trying to figure it out. Like any gritty fucking father would. And literally, the nanny's over, and I'm thinking, like, hey, fucking, hey, you saw the tweet last night? <laughs> Did you laugh at it? Trash, trash day. Yeah. Literally talking about trash day in front of her. And um, I don't know what fucking happens to my brain between then and getting, literally getting in the truck right after I'm talking about that. I grab my bag, grab my lunchbox, grab this stuff. Like, hey, you know, make, sure, make, sure the, make sure the Twisted tea pit vipes are ready to go. All this shit, dude. I get in the truck and I'm driving, you know, I'm, I'm down the road. And then I realize I, for, I fucking forgot to take the trash bins out to the end of the driveway. Did you see your neighbors have their trash bins out? Sometimes I do that. Sometimes that happens. But I, I didn't catch it there. I would have just went back in the driveway and did it. I was down because I'm trying to make the, uh, we had the uh, Josh Allen episode to do. And um, once I forgot, I was like, God damn it, Will. Dude, I get so fucking mad at myself when I forget things, especially when I'm literally saying, always trash that your boy's about to body back this motherfucker negative self-talk yeah negative self-talk I, I i'm an expert in that with myself i just berate myself yeah and so like any good dynasty does it's depth it's next man up mentality shot her shot her a note hey do you mind wheeling that thing out there and if you could please keep this between me and you do not let the wife know i think the key here is that i remember that it was trash day yeah i just didn't fully execute right you know what i mean right and that's half so, the battle uh, yeah that's half the battle but my yeah. pet peeve of the week is fucking forgetting to take your trash out there but i do love the fathers the men out there that are rallying around and and fucking reminding me and we're all working together to make sure hey trash days tomorrow boys let's get them things out there respect respect that brother what the, hey we went over six minutes i'm proud of that Let's get in this KB episode. Let's get in the KB episode. Let's fuck. Let's rip it in there, boys. Have a good fucking time because this is a good vibe. If you love ball, you're gonna love this episode. Yes, I love that when you love ball, you're dude, gonna you know, fucking love yeah. that, dude. Big hugs, tiny kisses. Let's start ripping some ads, dude. Let's start interrupting people with our ads. Before we get into the KB episode, we interrupt this episode to bring you Ice Barrel. Those of you who follow the boys on Twitter have seen this earlier this year. I tweeted uh, about being on the cold shower train. We talk about being in the cold tubs all the time. You, uh, hey, by the way, JP Push Up Tuesday, you've been your very first JP Push Up Tuesday experience. You did in the cold tub. Mm -hmm. And I was looking to graduate into the big leagues with a cold tub or barrel. Shout out to the boys at Ice Barrel. No free shout outs, of course. Uh, the team at Ice Barrel <laughs> saw the ice bath bat signal and they sent the boy one. I love the ice barrel. I use it absolutely every fucking day, twice on Tuesdays. Cold showers are no more. You get the ice barrel, you don't need it anymore. Huberman, Dr. Huberman would say, all you need is 11 minutes in the in the ice barrel to tap into that brown fat, that adipose tissue. I'm now I'm just I'm just plucking words left and right, but to essentially look lean, mean, and a machine like the boy Taylor does over here. I'm 6'2", and what I like about it, unlike tubs, that you can comfortably sit in it upright, completely up to my shoulders. We're talking <laughs> neck down, boys. A minute and a half to two minutes every fucking morning. Uh, there, are, Here's all the benefits to cold therapy. And this is where we got to get into the notes of this thing. Increased energy and focus, better recovery and performance, improved mood and brain health. It helps alleviate depression and anxiety, pain relief management, reduces inflammation, and also reduces stress. Honestly, there's no better way to start your day. It's one of the best investments anyone can make for their daily routine. And again, big shout out to the boys at Ice Barrel. If you play your cards right, you might boost the testosterone a little bit too. Boost that testy, boys. Uh, but what we did for you guys is we're getting you guys $150 off your barrel so you can get started on your cold therapy journey right away. Go to icebarrel.com slash bussin, B-U-S-S-I-N. That's icebarrel.com slash bussin for $150 off of your order. Now, enjoy the Kevin Byard episode. Were you one of the first five pods? For sure. Because I remember it was like, Delaney, Braves, right. I was on. Yeah, because I was like, hey, KB, will you mind hopping on the bus? <laughs> <laughs> I was for sure. I was nervous about. asking everybody back then. Bruh. Bro. What, was, uh, what was your thought process when we figured out we were making a podcast? Because at that time, nobody was really doing podcasts. Did you think anything of it? I mean, at first, I remember, obviously, when Will first got on to join the team, like, it's funny as shit, like, cool personality. Now, both of you guys hit it off. And I remember one day we was in the locker room. I forget. I don't remember what day it was. He was like, 
was kind of asking guys, like, bro, I'm thinking about doing a podcast. Mm. And this is before, like, obviously, like, it wasn't a whole lot of athletes doing podcasts. So I was yeah. like, bro, you be dope at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got a really good personality and everything. But I didn't know if he's actually going to do it or not. But I was like, bro, you will be dope at it. So, bro, you I mean, just to see where podcasts are now, and you know, everybody want to do a podcast. Yeah. Now, but you were kind of like the pioneers. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, you, Log fathers. you, Logan Ryan, and Derek Morgan were guys who were like, oh, you should do it. Like, oh, those are the three. Be solid. Those are the pillars. Yeah, they gave me like the the validation or like the confidence because you when when I was. It was like when I go through it in my mind, like, you know anything with athletes, right? Like when you're in the locker room or you go in, you got a business endeavor going on or something else that you're doing outside of ball. Right. You're always curious when you step in the locker room, like if you're going to get chirped at or mm -hmm. what's going <laughs> on. Like, oh, you're doing this, now you're doing right. that. So you always want like the validation of your peers. And I feel like when I asked that and you guys responded that way, I was like, oh man, maybe maybe I'm just in my own head too much For about sure. this stuff. Especially when we first started the next year with Brable. Like we'd be in team meetings Hilarious. when you weren't on the team. Rabel would like chirp me about doing a podcast or he was whatever. Definitely teasing, for yeah, sure. teasing. And then obviously, when you came on in 2020, he's like, "Let's see what our our head of media is up to today." Yeah, and you're tweeting about whatever. Yeah, it's bro. a it's a hairy deal doing something in the public eye outside of football. Right. It is. It, it was also new too. You yeah, know what I'm saying like, right. and I don't know if it was like a. It's, I don't want to call it a stigma or anything like that, but you know, obviously, you know, being with the Titans, like you have your media rules and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But just be like, okay. Most players, I feel like, don't really want to put themselves out there in the media that much and kind of be on that side while you're still playing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's right. kind of just like a balance. So Especially when you can, there's so much up for interpretation. Because it's like exactly. the very first podcast. Because I remember uh, uh, Taylor hit me up. He's like, hey, we had a team meeting. Because the Delaney episode was making its rounds, like on Pro Football Talk right. and everything else, about the the team IV. Right. He's like, man, I felt like I was about to die. So the headline but, Yeah, is, Raiders preseason. Yeah, uh, Titans IV. You know, I don't think it was this, but almost right, right. Todd Torricelli came up to me and he was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Are you guys, is it the Ray first week? A, I was like, Damn. Ray runs a meeting the first week. And I remember, because you know, Ray, Ray's first year as a head coach sitting in those meetings. Yeah, and exactly. And just, you know, he's a lot different than he is now. Oh, for sure. So, I mean, you could say it. Yeah, he was He was a lot he, different. He sucked the first everybody year. Everybody hated Ray's the first year. <laughs> <laughs> you could say it. I mean, it was everybody like, yo, who the fuck is this guy? Bro, I never forget. And Not sucked. It no, was this, just, it was no, he was fucking. He was so like, rough around the edges. Yeah, bro. I remember his, our first me in their OTAs. Bray was first year, and I think this is this is the year that you signed your contract extension. Yeah, I remember the first me, and you know, obviously he used to have the low lights. He don't really do it no more, but he had the low lights. And Brother. the first play was like us in shorts. It was a run play, Derek going up the left, and like Taylor blocked this guy, and it kind of did like a home run trot because you know Derek had broke, kind of. I wouldn't say you jog, but you kind of did a home run drop about 10 yards, and he literally just, like, lit Taylor up. I was like, oh, shoot, like. Bro, he I, went I'm in on everybody. Player, I'm like, bro, Taylor's one of the best left tackles in the league. Like, he's getting into him for, like, for something that I felt like was just, just a regular play. Like, nobody right. really paid attention to Murdered him. So me. I was like, oh, yeah, so after that point, every team meeting, you know when the lights went low, and he cut that film on, everybody kind of leaned back. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, like, fuck, fuck, here we because go, you man. you almost written to the meeting room, like, as long as I'm not on this low lights, the first... 10 plays, I'm good to go. I had a good practice. Yeah, but every yeah, every practice, there'd be like two or three plays, you're like, those could be on. Oh, 100%. And you're like, fuck, man, you're walking please. into the meeting like, bro, I hope he don't put this play I up. know, yeah, you look at like the timeline of practice. Like, you look at Indy and you're like, all right, we're, wait, it's coming, it's bro, coming. Hit, yes. Like the first team period, and you're like, okay, it was in the first team period, it's gone. Yeah, right. And you're like the third team period, then back to the first team period and get your ass, you're like, fuck, dude. I'm Damn. sweating to thinking about it again. Yeah, real talk. But my, my worst one was JPP. JPP, he put that killer move on me yeah. and Vrabel was to me like we're paying you for this and I'm like god damn man oh man yeah, Vrabel was the first head coach that uh basically it was a team meeting and you went over all these a lot of these plays of practice because usually you, the head coach would just address kind of the team and talk about things you need to get better at things were kind of yeah, lacking right. maybe show a couple plays mm. but you break out and handle all that kind of stuff like with your position exactly. coaches so smaller groups. So when you're out there sitting in this team meeting and Vrabe's going over everything, because even at OTAs, he talked about how you need to know your uh, teammates. Mm -hmm. He talked about quizzing them every day. And you couldn't, like, you know, say you take a, a bunch set. And yeah. if at another place, like we called it cluster. Like, if you spoke any different verbiage, he's fucking hard on you. I remember Jayon would I always have to go through some, right. some learning curves with saying the right verbiage. And uh, what, what is it, like, the double near gun when the... When the Z's tight, what is he? What did he like to call that? Side weak bunch. side B. Yeah, weak side, side B. You had to say weak side B. Or Rashawn when it was his rookie. Rookies always got oh, it the worst, Lord. bro. For sure. But you'd just be sitting there, just fucking tight, man. And he'd go through players, and it didn't matter. Remember that one undrafted cat 
where he's like, brother, you need to figure out if you want to play because I don't think you want to play. Man, you need to go home tonight. That into yeah, you need to go home tonight and think about if you even wanted to fucking be here. And honestly, it's still the same way when you talk about like speaking the same language. Like Braves is still the same way. We're in DB, and even if he's not in the meeting, he does the same thing with the coaches. Like, if you come from another place or another team, and you're, because we had a safety last year that kind of got signed during training camp, and we had this call where the safeties are make will say zombie. He was calling it drop drop kick or something like that. Yeah. He was like, no, we don't call it dropkick. We call it zombie. Like, yeah. he was getting on him or whatever. But it's the same but exact thing? It's the same exact thing. Like, it really hasn't changed well, at all. But I, w I will say there are, of all the people that were safe in that team meeting room, it always seemed like you and Derek were always kind of safe. <laughs> and you, could, you would tell, because we would sit well, in meetings. part of the skit. I was like, is that, is that right? Oh, or, no, yeah, yeah. Really but we would sit there right, KB? during a uh, during <laughs> still says my name all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. During honest. COVID, KB would sit right in front of me, and yeah, we would yeah, literally yeah. take bets like over under seven times. Rabel mentions KB's name, and it would get like right to the end of the meeting, and he'd be at like six, and then right off like four more KBs. No, hundred yeah. percent. It would always be like Ben yeah, Jones. He was always like, "Hey, right, KB?" And he'd yeah. be like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure." We were just in the mini camp, and he would say the same thing like, dun, 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 dun. "Like KB, KB, yeah, yeah." yeah. And they would keep going on like he's literally. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just always in that in that that you know that sight yeah. that sight line. Mm. But it, I don't know. If it's funny, like you said. Me and Verbal got a really good relationship, um, just based upon like I don't know. Like it's easy to respect the guy who played for a long time and obviously won championships and stuff like that. But I don't know, man. Maybe just like saying my name. Maybe KB just rolls off the tongue. Rolls off the tongue a little yeah, bit easier. Rolls the we were actually you just guys, well. You, I mean, you look at the the things you do. Like you're a leader. You play defense. You play consistently. You take all the snaps. Like. You're you're hitting all the marks that Vrabel wants. For sure, for sure. And now I come out, and then Derek, you know how Derek can get sometimes. Yeah, I mean, you just don't. I, I just think <laughs> hey, my favorite part, bro. It was 2020, and I remember we'd be, you know, we're, it's 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 one of the meetings, one of the days. Right. And uh, you know, he doesn't say a whole lot, like talk too a whole lot to there, because number one, Vrabel speak more on like the defensive side than offensive, oh, but he'll 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 dip his toes on the offensive. 100. Oh, percent He does a, you know, I'm not a running back, but if you if right. you just yeah, you just yeah. put your hand a little lower. Not, you want to end the hand lower. I'm not telling you how to run. Yeah, do your job, but you know, you know, instead of just holding it out there, dude, right. yeah, right. You know, use it as a weapon. Yeah. Use, yeah. It yeah. As use it as a weapon. weapon. Use it as a weapon. Whatever it's saying. You know better than me, because you could just you, you just know like Derek will be sitting there because you can tell Derek never really liked being called on or having to answer right, too many right. questions. Yeah. but it's you know Derek Henry. Bro, when you know, I'm not trying to tell you how to run the football, but right here, if you just cap him instead of if you just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might work out better for you. Like I said, I'm not a running back. Right, yeah, yeah. But then Honestly, he I felt like that's a lot of, I wouldn't say a lot of the reason, but even when, like, Bray will get on you in the team meeting room mm -hmm. or something like that, I feel like y'all really had a really good relationship because, and I don't know how you feel about it, but I will always notice, like, we'll go into the games and I'll walk into the locker room, you know, going to the stadium, and you and Verge be busting each other's balls, like, almost yeah. like play fighting a little bit. I'm right. like... They're just getting on this man in the meeting room, but then you see him before yeah. games. Like, they're really, really cool. So, I don't know. Maybe he felt like you can take it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying that Derrick can't, but I feel yeah. like with certain guys, like, I think he it, knows how to. He does know, how, know how, to, how to. He knows how to coach everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rabel, like, I think, they coach everybody the same way. Yeah. You know Rabel's I mean? level of awareness is really high. Like, Derrick, you, you, you can pick it. Like, some days Derrick will be, like, loud, yelling, telling jokes. And other days you can just tell, hey, Derrick wants to be left alone today. Right, right, right. Me, I'm always kind of loud. And I think Vrabel saw that as an opportunity, like, all right, I can chirp this guy because we can go, we can go back and forth a little bit. 100%. And that was, but there were times, yeah, you know, I'm like, why the fuck is this man always on me? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm doing my job, yeah. and just like he would tell Derek, like, I'm not a running back, but he would come into the damn O line room smoking on a jewel and sit there, <laughs> and I miss a block. He'd be like, Taylor, just fucking get in front of him, yeah, like, just yeah. block him. Like, it would be totally different the way he talked to me, the way he talked to Derek. Maybe it's because he played like as a pass versus a defensive lineman, yeah. so maybe he has like. Something against offensive you know, line. Right, I don't know. He, 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 he's played pretty much every position. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. He's done it all. He sat in every seat. Yeah, I played 14 years in the league, won three yeah. Super Bowls. What do I, 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 I know? I've been a backup. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I played 14 years. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. What, do, yeah. what do I know? But dude. not me. I mean, I was pretty much just his punching bag. No, you weren't, dude. <laughs> Will, Will is so funny because he's like, I don't know where Rabe and I's relationship is, but Rabe would literally text Will a picture of him in like Park City, Utah, and be like, hey, Next year we're going skiing. No, 100 in the off season and then just Rave in different. Loves you, bro. Rave loves, loves you, well. He loves, loves well. You, different time, like moments of the season. It's always like I'm like, oh, he's joking with me, but I I'm always thinking in my head like, man, you fucking. When he talks like, hey, let's see what our social media manager is up to. Remember that time I had a 
I put Darren Bates in the uh, the neck brace. Yeah, and I made him wear a yellow jersey. Hilarious. And then we was like, you know, doing. I, I took a video of it in the locker yeah, room. Yeah. And I remember he texted me that night. He's like, "You think it's smart putting uh, putting videos of guys who were injured on video on on Twitter?" <laughs> yeah. And then uh, oh, I didn't no. know what to say. And he goes, "I can't wait for the team meeting tomorrow." And I just remembered like not, sleeping. Be, not being able to sleep that, that you're night. You're just super nervous yeah, about it. Just, and then when he does call on it, whether or not I know guys think it's funny, but I'm truly sitting there like, "Fuck, man." No, I right, right, right. <laughs> Going you know, to bed. Even like when you came back for the second time or the third time, and you did your um, when you did your skit the second time, the the, the Braves yeah, yeah. skit, bro. You don't understand how funny that was. But I just like I remember just peeking back at Braves, like he was just looking small, like he was just as proud, loving like, it. He was loving it, bro. I'm telling Dude. you, bro. Braves, we have grown, we've grown a lot. We've he, grown. Yeah. Love I went to Braves office that like last camp, and I was like, hey, we got to get Will for the rookie show. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. He's like, no, we're not doing that. Apparently, as soon as I walked out the door, he called Will immediately. Oh, real? He goes, yes. Hey, would you want to? Would you want to be Coach Rabel again in training camp? And I was like, Absolutely. I mean, you saved the rookie show. Saved it. I mean, the rookie show was all. It wasn't bad, was bad, it wasn't rookie, bad but yeah. it's the never good. It was not bad. Yeah. yeah. Previous years, it was pretty bad. Like we had some really bad performances. I remember during COVID year, um, because we obviously we was in a bubble, and when we had two like defense alignment guys got up there like, cut off. T-shirts and start yeah, dancing, bro. some old weird stuff. I was like, bro. And everybody's kind of scattered. Like, there's yeah, not really that close. You want to condense. Vibe. You want shoulders touching shoulders. Yeah. That's what makes yeah. you do a rookie show too. Like, if a guy next to you just like out of control, laughing, bumping into you, like, yeah, kind of gets for it a good. Gets you going, dude. Gets you going, but dude, the the antics, the antics with Malarkey though, he would come in with a little bent knee, touching his other knee, talking about, <laughs> hey. KB, I got a hundred for you if you can make this basketball shot. No, totally, it's a totally different vibe. Definitely totally different, different vibe. vibe. Man, I couldn't stand him. Oh. <laughs> I could not stand. Woo! We interrupt this episode to bring you Duke Cannon. We'd like to talk to you about your shower game for a minute. Here's mm. the fact: the body body wash you're using right now is weak, watered down, and probably smells like a JV locker room. Simply put, it's not getting the job done. The boys need a shower of substance after a hard day's work, and that's why we use thick. High viscosity body wash sir. from Duke Cannon. Yes, sir. Thicker is better. Duke Cannon thick body wash is built to work hard and not spew down the shower drain. Woof. All the scents are amazing, but my personal favorite is Midnight Swim. It smells like a cannonball into a moonlit lake. Not a dip in the hot tub at the Starlit Motel. Also, you boys were at NASCAR yesterday. I put that, that dry cool on. The only cool thing on your body. The only cool thing on my body the whole time, but the pits were smelling great and feeling fresh, my boy. You have to try Duke Cannon. So for a limited time, we're hooking the boys up with 20% off your first order at DukeCannon.com with, uh, with code THEBOYS20. That's 20% off when you use code THEBOYS20 at DukeCannon.com. Duke Cannon, work harder, smell better. I remember this was, was it my second year or third year? Remember, Malarkey took us up to Fort Campbell? Yes. And he had us do this obstacle. Listen, Will, when I tell you, this might have been some of the hard, probably the, one of the hardest workers I had to do in my life. Like, obviously, Malarkey was, like, big in the military. He obviously brought a lot of military speakers and stuff like that, some Navy SEALs or whatever. But he took us up to Fort Campbell as a team, right? And I don't know. It was just like, we didn't know he was going to go up there and do a crazy workout. It was like, you know, we're going to go up there, you know, kind of have your Titans gear and stuff like that on. So... The guys taking us through this, like, we literally had to, like, the first part of it was, like, guys picking up a huge log, three or four guys, taking it up 40 yards, then, boom, running around here, going to this, like, this trench. You know how you ever see, like, guys crawling in the mud and, yeah. like, bro, with barbed wires on top of you, and they're just spreading mud or whatever, and it was just so funny because I remember uh, DeMarco Murray and Delaney Walker was looking aside, like, bro, I'm not doing it, like. Like, bro, get on the floor, get on the ground, yeah. do this. Nah, Dude, I'm just gonna sit on the side. Delaney, it was too, bro. Geek Delaney. Geek Delaney. Delaney was so funny about shit. shit. Like, all bro. the coaches, every coach I've ever seen cross Delaney's path loved him, but Delaney would not do some of the shit. And Delaney in those fucking, um, what is it? What, what's the the union union meetings? Yeah, yeah, for we'd sure. We'd be damn near out of those oh union my meetings. God. We'd be like, it'd be like, hey, we got an hour meeting today. We're gonna go over all stuff. They talk about four hundred one k, all the things, and then like everyone's like, how do we just get the fuck out of here as fast as possible? Hundred <laughs> percent. Five minutes before the meeting's over, say, did anybody have any questions? Delaney would raise his hand like, Delaney, we want to leave. We're trying to go. And he would ask some dumbass questions. <laughs> he would ask the dumbest questions. 
Like, no, just like fact. hypotheticals that are never going to take place. Let's and just say and he would, but the thing happens. is, he would get like two, three other guys to like buy into that yeah, question. Exactly. And We'd be there for another 20 minutes. But that was the beauty of Delaney, dude. It's funny now because I'm like the union rep of the team now with the NFL PA. So I almost want guys to ask you questions. Gotta, you got to answer that. That's what you're saying because, yeah. especially when you're a young player, bro, you just finished at. practice. And then, like, obviously, we're leaving practice, whatever. And they were like, okay, we got a union meeting. Mm. And it's like, bro, you're trying to be on the first thing smoking out of the building, but then you got to stay for extra 45 minutes to either vote on something or talk about union dues. You're like, bro, I'm trying to go. It's, it's already yeah. 5 o'clock. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. I mean, you're where it's dark at 5 o'clock, and you're just like, man, I'm trying to get fucking home, nah, bro. that's right. a fact, bro. I'm you hit the middle fly. of the season. You hit late October, and it's like, can we just get the fuck out of here, man? Yeah, I'm trying to do whatever I can to get up out You're there bro. so damn early. When's the Madden check hit? Yeah, exactly. Nah, for real. And it's funny because I... Even, like, thinking about training camp, like, you talking about malarkey. Remember we used to get out of, like, training camp with malarkey at, like, 8 o'clock? Yes. 30 at night? Right. And then bed check would be at 10. Bed check would literally be... I remember that. And then guys were like... Because we would have, like, a three-hour break in between the day. And then, like, obviously I was a young player then, but I know, like, guys like Derek Morgan and Rack would be like, hey, malarkey, like, you know, on, on a leadership council deal. Yeah. Like, malarkey, like, you know, how about we take out this long brick in the middle and just push everything up so we can get out later? Like, what? Training camp is supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be super hard. I'm like, but, you know, that's how it is when you got coaches that played, you know, back in the 80s or yeah. 90s and stuff like that. And obviously, it was really hard. You know, they right. were probably having two a days, three a days, stuff like that. I'm like... They probably thinking we're soft. Yeah, it's like, bro, it's not the same type of thing no more. Bro. Yeah, it's different times. It's evolved. That three-hour break, though, it was such a pain in the ass because of how late you got out, but some of the most fun times. Yeah. The locker room, the, all that. the lights would be out. Some guys would be taking naps. Dudes would be playing cards in the corner. You be playing Super Smash Brothers. Nah, that's a fact. There that's was like fact. some fun times, but it was some bonding. It was going on nice, for sure. but then as soon as eight thirty hit, and you're like, bro, I have to literally have to go back to the hotel and go right to sleep. Not hundred percent. What hotel did you guys stay in then? Um, we were at the the first place I ever stayed at was Millennium Maxwell House. Were you ever there? No, nah, I'm glad. I think the year I got there was the year y'all moved out of. I heard dude, some bad stuff about there. Like five or six dudes got bed yeah, I say I heard about that. It was bad. Oh, shit. Yeah, it would be like getting cars broken too. Too. It was bad out there. It, it was that was the rough times. And then we went to like <laughs> Spring rough. Hill Suites or something like that yeah, after. Spring Hill, yeah, that was my rookie year. Man. Because we got, like, in Washington, we got to go. We went to, to Richmond and did training camp. Mm -hmm. So the majority of our time would be at the hotel, like the Omni. We right. got put up in the Omni and stuff. So we, we when we had the big, long breaks, it'd be at the hotel. So whenever meetings concluded or whatever, right. we just got to go right up to our room. Because was, here, you guys did all the... We, we would always do the meetings at the facility and then drive to whether it's, you know, hotel or go home or something right. like that. Yeah. How is that, like, having to travel... Like somewhere for how far was it? You said two hours, probably two and a half hours away from where we like lived. Where y'all live? How was that? Like, but you said y'all was in the Omni, it. so yeah, that was in a nice hotel. Dog, I loved it, bro. We, it's like you know, you're the camaraderie's at an all time high because right, right. you're you're taking these you're taking buses over to practice. That's probably the only part that you didn't like is like yeah, you're right. just going you're hopping on buses. But man, like exactly. you know, you're all in this awesome hotel together. You're doing all the meetings there. You're doing, you get all your meals there, everything else. And then when you have the off days and everything else, you're all there. Mm -hmm. So everybody that's at the hotel are hitting the same spots, whether you go out, whether you're enjoying, right. dude, traveling to go do training camp. Like, those are some of the most fun. Because I would just think about, like, you think about, like, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They still go to, like, St. Vincent, like, community college or something like that. And, oh, like, shit. players are living in, like, dorms for training camp. And I was thinking, like, bro, that has to be trash, like. And it, it may be cool. Obviously, it's a traditional thing that they probably do up there. But I'm like, because, for example, one reason why in training camp, one of the only things I really don't like about training camp is the fact that players have to stay in hotels. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe because I'm just getting a little older, but I'm like, bro, I get better sleep in my own bed right. than There's I would no in hotel question. beds. Yeah. So it's like, I'm just thinking about having to sleep in a dorm bed. Like, do guys, like, bring their own beds from home in there? Or Some is it like... Do. Like, I remember Josh Norman, he bring his uh, hyperbaric chamber. You know, when T.O., yeah. the story came out about T.O. sleeping in the hyperbaric chamber during training camp. I right, feel like right, guys right. were trying to get on the wave of doing that. Like, uh, guys are trying to bring all this stuff. Like, you know, when you're... Everybody's got their Norman tags, their game yeah. readies, like different stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, whether dudes are bringing a memory foam pad to sleep on. All right. Um, but yeah, like... But being a rookie and coming in, like, you kind of don't know anything else. You're like, oh, this must be how it is. What oh, a whirlwind oh, being a rookie sick. is. Yeah. To, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's sick. We get to stay in this Omni hotel. It's you know what I mean? It's First. wild, too, when you see, like, other rookies, like KB, for instance. Like, when he, you're uh, two years younger than me? Yeah, so, he was 14. I was 16. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, 16, 
when you're playing offense, like you don't really focus too much on like a safety. No, no. And I remember like halfway through the season, you were making some plays yeah. as a rookie, and I like went over some defensive guys. I was like, hey, oh, is KB gonna be good? Like, is he good? Like, you really have no idea. Yeah. It's crazy how we're on the same team, but you really don't know. And everyone's 100%. like, oh yeah, he'll, he'll be good. He'll be you good. Had a shitload of picks your rookie year, right? No, I didn't have his any picks. Second my year. Oh, my second, second year. year. Okay. I led the league in picks. Second year, you went crazy. That Cleveland yeah, I, I, I game. Was that crazy. Cleveland? It was Cleveland. <laughs> yes. That was 16. That was, that was like the coming else. out party for KB. The thing is, like, we barely won the game, like 12 to 9 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's when we were always running like, bro, duo. We were always running duo. And, like, I was, like, returning them, like, to the plus 50 and stuff like that. The Woods was, like, kicking field goal. I'm like, bruh, come on, man. Like, we're supposed to be our, you know what I'm saying, getting some distance between this team. Yeah, you know, you know, you're, uh, becoming a good player when you're making plays like that and then getting mad at the offense. Because when you're a rookie and you make a big play, it's 900%. like you're just happy you made that big play. Not, and honestly, even during that time, like, I really wasn't mad at the offense. I was just more like... Be honest. Bro, like... No, nah, honestly, being a young player, I'm like, bro, I'm out here balling. Like, yeah. No, no doubt. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, bro. Yeah. bro, I'm out here balling. Like, you, almost, you almost just get the pick and return and stuff, and then when the offense is on, you're like... I'm just like, bro, like, honestly, on, like, like, we can't do nothing. Yeah, we can't do nothing. Because we would literally run these same plays. We would either run a uh, open side, like, inside zone, or we would run a w duo, which is <laughs> gap scheme, no yeah, puller. So this is what I learned, like, or I've, I've noticed, obviously, getting older. Like, when you get older, you start to get pissed off. Yeah. Because like, it's funny, when I was a younger player and I'm just out here balling, I'm like, bro, like, I'm sitting on the sideline, and I caught the three picks just like, bro. Like, in awe of, like, bro, I just caught three picks in an NFL game. Like, yeah. I'm really, like, blow. But then, like, you'll have, like, Brian Arakpo and Derek Morgan and Jarrell Case on the other side, like, man, what are we doing? Right. Like, cussing out the offense. Like, it was just so funny. And now, like, yeah. you just get older. It's like, I get it now because, you know, you don't have a few more years. Like, obviously, you play more years than you're probably going to play. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you want to be successful in everything. And you're obviously more in the leadership position being that older. So it's like, you're kind of in tune with everything that's going on versus when you're young. You're just like, I'm just out here running around, making plays, like, I don't really know what's going on. Just trying yeah. to do your best. I'm trying to make a name for myself. Like, right, right. but then you start to understand the game contract. better. Contract. Like yeah, you're, trying to, you're trying to like you know get the accolades, impress your yeah, coaches, bro. stick around for years to come. Establish you don't really yourself. know how this thing really goes. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like when you're young, you just want to go out there and, and first first off solidify a role on the team. Mm -hmm. Right as a starter, role mm -hmm. player. I play on third downs. I play first. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, you just want to get on the team, make a name for yourself. Then you start going out and making plays. Then it's like, you just want to make more plays. Mm. You try to, like, as a young player, like, I'm not really worried about what's going on around the whole team. I'm just, like, focused on my job and stuff like that. But obviously, as you get older and you get a more of a, a leadership role in the team, you kind of, okay, now I'm a mentor of this guy or, or now I want to be able to be a leader to the offense and stuff like right. that. So, But as a young player, bro, I was out there trying to make plays, bro. That was it. Like, I wasn't... It's yeah. almost better being a younger player. Like I knew I had because you had, just don't know. Exactly. You just don't know shit. No. You know you're you know you're in the NFL. You know you're getting the right. the salaries. Like you know you're. You want to be a leader by example. Is yeah. what I would say. Yeah. Not vocally, but just by example. I just want to go out here and play hard, practice hard, and just that's it, really. You know. Yeah. What I'm saying? Just show everybody you're gonna be somebody. Yeah, because I feel like young players that try to come in and immediately become like vocal leaders on team where you already have seven, eight year, nine year veterans. They're looking at this guy like slow your roll, young pup. You know yeah, what I'm saying? go make some plays first, then right. maybe we'll start listening yeah. to you. I remember You're doing too much when yeah, I first when I when much. I first got there, we had two dudes in the offensive line room that were year ten plus. We went out for the first like run, the first like, you know, phase one OTAs practice. Right, and I was out there fucking sprinting. Yeah, and all, they, I was literally getting chirped for going too hard. And all all the te year ten guys, I'm like these fucking dudes don't know. They don't know <laughs> what I'm about to do in this league. Like. Like, legit, like, telling yourself whatever you got to tell yourself. No, absolutely. But then you get out to games, and you're, like, just happy to be out there. You're, like, I'm just going to play super fucking hard, and you're not realizing even if, like, in the fourth quarter, like, oh, yo, we're losing. <laughs> like, no, for real. No, you're you just, like, hey, did I play good? Did I not? Right. And then right, you start bro. to understand more, and then the guy, like, Vrabel, who comes in, who makes people understand the other side of the ball. Exactly. Like, he makes you know, like, hey, offense, we got to do this in this situation. He's quizzing guys on two-minute. Hey, what yeah. are you going to do in this two-minute situation? So, like, you hear that, and then you catch yourself during a two-minute when the defense is on the field, and you're like, they should be doing this. Exactly. They should be doing the fence where they don't let people out, out of bounds. Make sure they keep they tackle the guy. Make sure they pile on the guy when they tackle the nah, guy. For sure, for like, sure. You're like seeing all that, and you're like... He'd be locked in. Yeah, yeah you like be a little bit... Well, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, no, we, yeah, you have I don't want to go back to Vrabel, but I'd be in there like, fuck, do I know the defensive calls? Do problem. I know the worst what they want to do? tries to call on the team keys like after practice is over. Bro, I know. You know I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, I don't want to be... Well, me and, me be, and Ben, me and Ben would always be next to each other. I'd be like, all right, first one's this way, second one's this way. This is probably most Like, I'm not trying to get in this vision right now. It's funny because like I'll have guys on the team, and it's because I always know the team keys, 
And so, like, you know, at the end okay, of the practice, okay, baby, like, we get it. I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, he's a leader. He's a leader. Yeah, yeah. It's a real example. It's like, guys, make sure, like, what's the team keys? What's the team keys? Yeah, what's and they're looking keys? forward, too. Like, just and you're like, nervous as heck. Because, you know, Vrabel, he'll pick on certain guys. Like, if you're a guy that didn't answer the questions right in the morning meetings, he's going to ask you again. Yeah. Like, I feel like the, more, the longer you were Vrabel, you kind of learn his tendencies. Like, bro, if you messed up, be prepared to get asked the question again until right. you start to get it right. So, bro, like, being. Those things at the end of practice, as far as team keys and stuff, that's probably the funniest things ever because you just know, like, you just had a long practice. Like, you're tired, you're ready to get up out of here. And the last thing you remember is what the second special team key is. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, just, like keeping it real. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Because going into the meeting in the morning, you like, gotta say it, you got to say it basically verbatim. Exactly. Which you got to know exactly. exactly. Like, don't miss one word. Yeah, because I know, like, the first year and everything else, like, when all this stuff is happening, like, you know, you're thinking to yourself, like, oh, man, this is so dumb. Why do we keep doing shit like this? But over time, you realize, like, man, he does a, an incredible job, like, painting the vision of how you're going to beat a team week in 100%. and week out. He did that in 2019 we're so well. Whether we're at a weakness at one point, we got to pick up somewhere else. But just the way he talks about and paints that vision on team keys in each phase and then goes through it. Uh, with the tape throughout the week and then the Friday tape when he's talking about, you know, how many times you see guys swiping at the ball instead of punching Swipe, through. Instead of stabbing. Man. And that was like, through. yeah. He, he talks about stuff. He talks about these things so much, those fundamental football things so much that even when you're watching the game, you're like picturing Vrabel's voice going over it in a Friday tape. You're like, oh, this, this is going to reach the uh, Titans Friday tape. Right yeah. the house watching would, like a, a... I would text Frable when I like this past year when I was hurt. I would text him on like Sunday and be like, is that Friday tape? He goes, no question. Yeah. No yeah, question. no question. That's Friday tape next week, no question. Right had the career watching games sometimes. Like if it's if we played on Sunday, if it's Sunday night game, like right. you're just picturing like what Vrabel's gonna say in the meeting, like, oh, that's for sure gonna be on Friday. Yeah, yeah. or Thursday night football. You'd be yeah. like, this is for sure gonna make tomorrow. For sure. For sure gonna make because tomorrow. Even when you're gone, I like I couldn't shake him even when I was on the Raiders. He would send me, he would video record a play being made and then he'd be like, Celebrate with your teammates, man. <laughs> no shit. Hey, don't make it making it all about yourself. I see. But then it's funny because I remember sending the video to Raves like he had made an interception when he played. He had yes. the worst celebration. Yeah, I know in the world. exactly anyway, what you're talking about. Celebration. White guy celebration. He literally just ran off. Yes. Ran no. to, his teammates is chasing him. He just ran to the side and just sat down, didn't celebrate with anybody. That's so funny. And I'm like, bro, you gotta funny. practice what you preach, bro. Like real talk. <laughs> I am 100 percent because that like, was you my that shit personally. Be like, all right, yeah, yeah, next time you reply, fucking step up. I was like, oh, learn from the best. And it's great, of course, doing his own thing. Dude. Quick TO boys, quick TO, we gotta bring you a shout out, no free shout out from the boys at Netcoins. If you are for the boys, then listen up. Netcoins is an Netcoins is on a mission to make crypto investing super simple. They have the most popular cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, a killer mobile app, and best of all, no fee trading. Netcoins has a $25 cash bonus for new users who sign up using the promo code BUSSIN, B-U-S-S-I-N. But check this out, boys. Netcoins is upping the game. For the rest of June, Taylor and I will be going head-to-head to see which state gets the most new users. It's California and Michigan versus Nebraska and Missouri. Come on, boys, Grady, let's go stand up. The bus and bowl meets crypto. What's in it for everyone? Whichever boy gets the most users signed up, their home states will earn an additional $10 reward for users from those states. Taylor has a big advantage, as usual. Size advantage. Down low. But... I have that dog in me, as you boys know. Sign up now. Get $25 in cash to trade on the app when you use the promo code BUSSIN. Download the Netcoins app or learn more at netcoins.com. Let's go, California and Michigan. Back to the episode. Literally, when I, when I did the uh, that uh, mega cast playoff with uh, Michigan versus TCU, mm-hmm. I li- when defense would happen, there were guys like swiping and not stabbing. And I was saying that. And we go to commercial guys, but you know what you're talking about. You were hitting some good. Would, but like, it was, all, it was yeah. all Vrabel, dude. I literally was like, just get yourself in a Friday meeting right now, Lawan, and pick on a couple of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, a couple of DBs swiping, not stabbing. I'm like, hey, brother, that's a good play. But next time you got to stab through that whole thing. Yeah. I was like, damn, I'm really out here if doing it. If you're with Vrabel at least two years, and I would almost just say one year, like, there's no you way to buy you, in that one year, though. You got to buy it. You got to yeah. know, like, Rashawn's rookie year, I was like, hey, I would just remember always telling Rashawn throughout the entire year, like, hey, this yeah. is just mental warfare. Like, this, this is just what he does. This is just what happens. This is just how rookies, <laughs> how rookie, the rookie treatment is. But it would just always be like, when he get chirped, we just whisper, like, mental warfare, mental warfare. <laughs> so, I feel like Rashawn just didn't, wasn't faced. Like, he, when, he, when never, he punched that dude in the Denver game and then on Monday, oh, Rabel went oh off on God. him. That and you hilarious. saw Rashawn, he's like, okay, absolutely. And then walked out of the team meeting room, looking like he was unscathed. No bullet hit him. Rashawn doesn't. Like, if, I, if I did that, I'd be sitting yeah, there like a limp. Yeah. 
he was chirpable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he was there you go. truly rubber and glue. Like that old little saying as a kid, I'm rubber, you're glue. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. See it until we, like I said, we got into team meet, and I just like. Jake Butt, Michigan man. I just kind of turned around like, what's the flag for? Where you at? Yeah. I was looking to the sideline, and then I looked back like, oh. Bro, I saw it immediately, and I just felt like, where's my helmet? God damn it, I'm going to have to go play in this fucking game. I just showed up. I just showed up 10 days before. We were we were recapping that the other day, talking about the uh, the Vic Beasley. Like my first day coming back that second time was when everybody was we were like standing and not practicing the whole social justice stuff. And I was sitting there on my first day, like, oh, first day back, like we're not having to practice. Like we're 10 days out from the first game. Like this is nice. I completely miss off training camp. Yeah. And we were talking about Vic Beasley, like him chiming in from the back. Highlight y'all did. Honestly, that was probably one of the funniest things I've seen. Bruh, so first off, it was weird. That whole Vic Beasley deal was just like a weird saga. He had a weird year in Tennessee. Yeah. Because I remember when he signed weird in the guy. spring. He signed in the spring. And then, like, I remember Vrabel was just like, bro, like, the guys ain't even picking up the phone. Like, we just signed this man and it's like, don't not hear anything from him. Remember, he didn't report training camp, like, mm-hmm. the first week or two. Right. And, and nobody it, heard from him. It was unexcused. It was like, nobody was like, where is he? It's like, and then he just showed up. And I'll never forget this. I was leaving. I mean, I don't know if I was leaving. I was getting something in my car. And I walked in the park. I'm like, bro, somebody getting told, like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm thinking? Like, no, real talk. I'm like, bro, somebody's getting towed or we something We just like talked that. about that. That's so funny. And I come back in, and, and it was a dog in the car, too. It was a dog in the car. Yeah. I mean, the windows rolled down. It wasn't like the animal cruelty stuff, but the dog's in the car. I mean, it's close. It was close. <laughs> we're on the envelope. We're in the envelope. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're in August. August. Yeah. It's August. Like, yeah. Bro, it's somebody's getting towed. But it's this man's daily driver. He was daily driving a tow truck. Bro, it was the funniest thing in the world. Then, like you said, First time, it was like, this might have been his first day, second day, or whatever. Or he might have been there a couple days, but As he, a was, he was kind of weird because he didn't talk to anybody. And he sat really toward quiet. the back. And, bro, obviously, we're not practicing. Bray was giving the floor to everybody. People are talking about some real stuff, kind of right. talking about stuff that they've been through. And, and it was deep. It was actually deep. And then I was kind of just figuring out, okay, you know, what do you think about doing for the first game? Like, Because it was kind of like, do you want to do a message? Right. Standing arms, kind of what y'all was talking about. And, you know, I'm, I'm towards the front. Mm-hmm. So I'm not even really sure who's back there talking. And so I just heard a voice that I really had never heard before because I never heard him speak out loud. And this man was like, yeah, man, I, I think we should just I think we should just boycott the first game. It was one of those, like, what the fuck? What? Bro, I remember thinking because I didn't know <laughs> I was saying, too, that I knew the name. Like, I knew of Vic Beasley, but right, I didn't right. know that that was him. And I just remember looking and seeing, again, first day, and I'm, like, looking back there and seeing this dude say that, and I'm thinking, oh, that's a rookie. Like, he's gone. <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah. like he's that's like, it for him. Yeah, yeah that's Bro. it for him. Hey, that's a great idea, son. By the way, get your <laughs> yeah. playbook. John wants yeah. to see you. It's actually funny because Vrabel didn't just like cut him off or nothing. He kind of let him say what he was gonna say, but it was just like, but I had knew like talking to Vrabes beforehand, like they was pissed at Vic. Like, I remember comes to some of the leaders, like, this guy just didn't report and it was like he was hot, bro. So I'm like, bro, the first thing that you want to say out loud in front of the whole entire group. Is that we should boycott the first game, ma'am? <laughs> like I've never just seen. Think about that. Like, what are you talking about, yeah, bro? Right, like, real talk. Right. It was one was like, bro, this guy right here is out of his mind. I've never seen somebody that willing to go to so many distances to not play. Like he would do everything he could not like to I play. Said, that that was a weird year because like it was it was obviously it was COVID. The whole world was kind of in flux. It was weird, but you know we signed him. We signed Clowny. Like we signed Clowny. I think the week. Like, right around the time we signed you, it was like the week of the, the first game. And I remember Vic Beasley being training camp, like, it's like you said before, it's like chill and collect. It was like yeah. a real deal thing. Like, I have never met yes. anybody. Because he ever... was pissed that he got fined for not showing up. Yeah, but it was like, bro, you had no reason not to show up. It was ridiculous. Like, you didn't know that you weren't getting fined. Anyway. No one, I, I want to say, too, like, when those stories were getting written, like, nobody had heard from him when he wasn't showing up. Right. And wasn't there a photo that surfaced of that tow truck or, like, him being like, uh, he was like broken down and it was on like Snapchat or something. Bro, Go it big. was hilarious. And it's funny because the house that I, I was living in that during that time, I would I drove by like a street and I guess he had like an Airbnb. Mm. He lived not too far from me. Like, yeah. I, I seen the same tow truck in a, in, a, oh, in, a, bruh, in a driveway. I was like. Just making his daily <laughs> rounds, <laughs> man. Like, bro, this Big Beasley. Yeah. Like, big it's got to be big. Bro, it was hilarious. It's some ran- it actually had like a. Like some sort of business, like a number on the side of it and everything, like something towing. Yeah, yeah. And he said that, like, I guess, like, during the off season, like, he was living in the country or something. He helped, like, one of his boys, like, I guess, like, tow around, like, big bells of hay. I don't know what it was, but it was just like tow like, around big bells. Can't of go hay. get a, a pickup truck, like right. a regular truck, like. Yeah. Right. 
But it was hilarious. But like you said, it was weird because, and like I said, this is not me trying to just down on him, but it was just funny because, like, he would be, you know, in the training room, obviously getting treatment on his knees. Like, yeah, man, like, try to milk this thing to, like, game two or three. It was like, he would just openly be saying it. Openly right? saying it. And you know, like, I don't even think, even if he heard this, that he would be like, oh, I can't believe that. Like, nah, he was dead serious. Like, right. yeah, I'm trying to milk this thing to, like, you know, game two or three. Like, I'm just like, bro, you literally just got on this team and you sitting here just, open. I've never met anybody who openly just, like, because you'll see some people back in their moms, like, maybe they know they're hurting. Mm. And it's like, you know, I'm really not ready. I'm going to try it. But, like, but yeah. no, he was like, especially when it's open. like, oh, what, you know, what do you got I going on? I respected that. Cause it's like he was just dead serious. Like it's like you know, like, I'm just trying to milk this thing. Obviously, we didn't like it, but it was right. like, bro, this guy is very honest. Like it's ridiculous. Like, like oh, never met a football you, player like this. You would walk away from him with your buddies and be like, man, that's crazy. He thinks like that, but like, good for him. Yeah, <laughs> like then like, he's I mean, he, like his truly made that decision. Bro, it's a different type to, like, of cat, be done. Like, it's a different it's just type of fucking cat, crazy. Bro. Yeah, bro. Crazy. That whole year, the COVID year was interesting. Remember Hell when we yeah. got the, remember when we got the week off and beat Buffalo? Beat the shit out of Buffalo. We literally said this ass whooping we was were, brought to you by right, Zoom. It's hilarious <laughs> yeah. because I remember that week. And, like, obviously, guys, like, we couldn't work out together and stuff like that. So we were just doing, like, Zoom meetings or whatever. And, obviously, we destroyed the bills. And so, like, guys were, like, next week after the game, like, Vrabes, like, I mean, sh it's put on tape. We don't need a we practice. Don't, we don't got to practice. practice. Like, what we do don't we got to do anything. Bro, we can just get on Zoom, do our thing. We can work on our own, and then come to the game, you know? To this day, probably the best game we've played collectively as a team. 100%. Yeah. You no know, lie. In Titans history, we probably. Wasn't even nowhere near perfect. Even watching the film of the game, like, we all, everybody have, you know, nobody's played a perfect right, game. Right, right. But to dominate them the way we did, and we didn't practice the entire, I think we had a walkthrough mm. Saturday night or something at the hotel or something like that. I don't know if we stayed at the hotel. Did we stay at the hotel? I don't think we could stay at the hotel. We had a walkthrough at the facility. At the yeah. Bubble. Yeah, in like, the bubble. In the you bubble. You come in and you had to change there and the loop and everything yeah, else. we had our lockers Bro. were, like, in chairs. Yeah. And people forget we were supposed to play the Steelers. Oh, we well, were supposed yeah. to play the Steelers, and that game had to get moved. We did. So we went from like, "Hey, you're playing the Steelers." We're literally watching film of the Steelers, and then like, th for, like, like four days before we played yeah, the Bills, exactly. we're like, "Hey, we're not playing the Steelers. We're playing the Bills now." And it was like, <laughs> pushing the game so up. We got Josh like Allen here, make him roll to the right, like all this shit, dude. <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, we're just pivoting." Yeah. And it's crazy. And we like me, crazy. Ben, and Roger yeah. would be like, "All right, guys, let's meet at Lipscomb University." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a half-ass twenty-minute indie, get to get a little sweat going. Like, all right, boys. No, nah, right. Got to go hard. I remember going to that game, break being like. It's either going to be a dog fight or we're going to get blown the fuck out. Exactly. Because they were still practicing. Yeah, because we didn't know. And it was funny because I remember even leading, like, in the beginning of the week, it was like the coach was like, hey, and this is before, because remember the league was like, oh, y'all can't work out together. Yeah. Or something like that. But you know, we were working out, and then all of a sudden the league was like, you can't do that. Exactly. And then there was a whole thing, are we going to lose right. games or is something going to happen? Like Paul or Paul Kowarski had, like, Paul. posted a, a picture of, like, Tannehill and the receivers getting together, like, oh, they're breaking COVID rules. Yeah, or like, the safeties and the DBs are out somewhere here. We were, because this was early in the week where we were just like, we was at um uh Rose Park or something like that, right close to the GOAT. A little baseball right. field. Yeah, a little baseball field, yeah. just doing a little drills, just trying to stay in shape or whatever. And then, like, we did that for, like, a day or two, and then eventually they said we couldn't do anything. So, but it was hilarious, dog. That, that whole year, it was a weird year, bro. You, but, but it was perfect because the theme is just like, hey, just say, just say when and where. It doesn't matter. We'll it doesn't fucking, fucking matter. So doesn't be sitting there matter. Bro, we blew them like, the fuck yeah, out. Dude. Bro, we destroyed them. Yes. It was like 40, 47 to 20-something. They were practicing hard, too, because I remember I was talking with uh, Trent Murphy. Uh, we got on the phone. I was like, are you guys, like, what are you guys doing? He's like, bro, we're practicing fucking hard. Like, like we had to, He goes, we had to do condition. We had to do gassers the day after practice. He's like, we're, we're That was that coach's first year, right? Uh, no, I don't think it was his first year, but it was more of like, don't, you know, basically don't think of these guys lightly just because they can't practice or do anything right, else. Right. So they were trying to keep them sharp and like they had you know, to keep be that thinking. Edge and everything else. They everything had to else. go in that locker room after and be like, damn, they definitely. The coaches had to think like we worked them too hard. Yeah, no, like they they did something wrong. Because we got a couple picks from Josh Allen, which was kind of surprising. Yeah, we had, I remember yeah, like when we were getting picks. these, yeah, we were getting these picks. I'm I'm sitting there like, damn, hey, we're about to whoop these boys. We're about to whoop them. <laughs> but we was, really did that too. It was crazy, bro. Like. I think Mal I know Malcolm had a pick. Um, who else caught a pick? The street rat, Malcolm Butler. The street the rat, street dude. Rat One of Rabel's got to be favorites of all time. Got to be favorites. 100%. Yes. 100%. He's, he's Malcolm, like, you're just a fucking street rat, dude. Yeah. You're just a street rat. He and he'd be like, however big his contract was, yeah. and he's just, I mean, out there competing every a, fucking day, bro. With a lip in. Uh, yeah. With a lip in. Yeah. You see a DB <laughs> put a lip in, you're like, oh, this is a country ass motherfucker. Yeah. Bro, this, this guy, Malcolm, bro, like, even just thinking about that COVID year, one day Malcolm like, like almost like went missing. Mm. It's weird, he just went missing. Like 
couldn't like the best ones always do. Yeah, I remember like <laughs> coaches came and like, hey, anybody seen Malcolm? Like, where's Malcolm at? Like, no, nah, I'm calling them. Nobody's picking up the phone. I think they, you know, they send Jeb. You know, they send Jeb on the Aaron. Jeb yeah. go over his house. It was like, bro, nobody was there. Like, but his car's parked outside. He said his mailbox is full of mail and everything. was like, and then I thought doing detective forget. work. Because <laughs> remember, COVID, we was in the bubble and we had our meeting rooms in the bubble. And we were all spread out. We had like curtains up and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And I remember we just in the meeting. And then I remember just kind of turning to my right and, bro, Malcolm just appeared. Just like slid in. It just sat down like it didn't say anything. Did it he get in trouble? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. Nobody, the coaches are like, they didn't know that he had walked in at the time, right? Yeah, he didn't. That's what I'm saying. He slid in. So funny. And then the coach was like, hey, what's up, Malcolm? He was like, hey, what's up, y'all boys? And like, <laughs> just kind of just went along. Like, bro, where were you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bro, it was one of hilarious. the best, man. Nah, definitely one of the best for sure. Absolute competitor. When he had that pick, what was it, like right before Christmas against the Redskins? And it was like, just go down. But he took right it all down. the way back. He cribbed it. I'll and tell you, who almost, actually, who almost taught him was Trent Williams. He did. Bro, that man is just fucking ridiculous. He did. It was funny, bro. Like I said, Malcolm's a dog, man. He was one of those, like you said, like legit street rat kind of guys. Scrappy. I mean, didn't always have the best technique. No. But he just had that He just had that ability just to be, I don't know, man, just like a street it's like, you know, like, you got, like, and one basketball, street basketball. He was, like, a street football player where it was just like, oh, forget the technique. I'm just going to go out here and be Malcolm, and I'm just going to scrap. Yeah. I'm going to make plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he was as a player. Yeah, and just that mentality, too. <laughs> like, I felt like any time he lost, it never really phased him. Nah, this not play right here? Yeah, yeah. this is the play right here. Christmas time, too. Like, the game's over. Go down. Go, go down. down. Yeah, it's literally, it's over. <laughs> That's Malcolm for you, Dude, bro. Trent. He's trying to get a touchdown. Them stats matter. He's trying to nah, for real. that contract, That's man. That's why I almost feel like, bro, I don't even blame you. Because at the end of the day, like, obviously, you don't get in the film room, like, Malcolm, next time, get down. But when you get to the offseason and you're talking contract and stuff, it's like, I yeah. had a pick six. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, the highlights don't matter. Just, like, whistle on a piece of paper. Like, exactly, bro. Pick, pick six. That stuff matters, like, man. All right, all right, dude. We interrupt this episode to bring you Bolero. Bolero is the world's largest owner and operator of bowling centers with over 325 locations throughout the United States, currently located in 34 states. Bolero is known for re-innovating re one of America's oldest pastimes into a new and unforgettable experience with modern and beautiful design venues, expansive arcades, premium signature cocktails, and a creative menu. Now we're here to introduce the Barstool Bolero Invitational. This summer, this summer's most anticipated event, except for Boston Bowl, except for <laughs> Real Olympics. <laughs> Joining the Invitational is easy. Simply enter your name and visit the Bolero near you and bowl for your chance to be entered to win one of our ultimate prizes, including limited edition Barstool Bowling gear, an event, an event at any Bolero and the ultimate grand prize, which includes tickets to the Super Bowl and NBA Finals, plus a trip to the Barstool Bolero Invitational Final in Chicago on August 9th. The fun doesn't stop here. Enjoy a guaranteed spot on the lanes when you reserve a lane or book an event at Bolero near you. Visit Bolero.com. Use code, promo code Barstool for 15% off your next lane reservation. This offer is only valid through August 31st. Visit www.bolero.com forward slash Barstool to learn more about the Barstool Bolero Invitational starting July 12th. Participation is open until July 23rd. That's the day after your boy's birthday. No skill is required. All participants have an equal chance of winning. To find a participating center near you, please visit www.bolero.com forward slash Barstool. How do you feel when you're at the end of the game and they're throwing up a Hail Mary and you know you could easily just catch it, but you know you're supposed to swat it down? Like, there's got to be something going through your head. Be like, man, these stats would look nice so, right yeah, now. I feel like it just depends. Like, for example, if it's a Hail Mary, you know the ball is under, like, badly under throw. I'm going to try to pick it off. Yeah. But if it's in, like, you know, you never know, bro. Like, there's been some wild moments that happen. Yeah, last, like, sometimes you just think about just get the ball on the ground. But I ain't going to lie, like, halftime or something like that, I might try to pick it off. Like, if it's half, but if it's fourth quarter, I'm like, okay, let's just get the ball Games on the ground. Games on the line. Games on the line. Okay, let's just bat the ball down. Let's, let's just win the games, get out of here. But halftime might, you know. I try to pick the ball off, honestly. Try to do something with it. Get us some points yeah, late. Like, you know, you never Man. know. Like, it's crazy. Free game. It's crazy when we talk about like the being so naive when you're a rookie and like you kind of see articles coming out about guys that are older and you don't really know what to think. And now you've, being older, you've caught yeah. yourself and like, 
kind of, not crossfires, but you've caught yourself oh, sure. in situations like, hey, what's KB up to? What's he thinking? Like, there are all these new news articles out about you in the right, beginning right. of the year. I remember texting you and be like, hey, if you want to talk about it, I remember that. free range. It was I like was in Cabo. Yeah, it was in March. It was in March. Yeah, and I was like, hey, if you want to talk about it, this can be your no, platform sure. or whatever. And you're like, hey, I'll get back to you. Never got back. That's fine. We're here I now. I didn't. I didn't. But and it, was, obviously, it, was, it was reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hundred percent. But do you want to? Do you want to talk about your situation with that at all? Like, yeah, this sure. is kind of your place to do it. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, was like, I would like you said when you text me, I was in Cabo, right? And uh, and so yeah, obviously, I we had mini camp last week. I did the uh, the interview, and obviously, they asked me a whole bunch of questions about it, and you know, and obviously, I'm you know, we're the bo- you're the boys, you know what I'm saying? So, uh feel a little bit more comfortable talking about stuff like that. But, you know, dealing with the whole situation, when I was in Cabo and that thing happened in March, like, the conversation between the team and my agency, it happened like a month ago. Yeah. And so, like, I kind of already knew the situation, you know what I'm saying? So when I was on the beach, literally with my wife, kids are in, in, in you know, playing in the sand. I'm just kind of sitting back and, like, I really wasn't paying my phone, but, like, people start texting my phone and, like, like, my agent called me. He's like, hey, you been talking to the media or anything like that? I said, bro, I'm on the beach. Like, what you mean? So then I jump on social media, and I see my, like, my mentions blowing up. It's like, somebody was doing a radio show. I don't know who it was here in Nashville. It was like, <laughs> okay, B asked for a, tr- a trade or will. asked to be released or something like that. It probably was. He probably <laughs> yeah. was the leak. Probably, might be the source. Yeah, it's the leak. So, uh, uh, just build it up even more. Yeah, he wants like, out. Bro, yeah. Like, and it was just weird because I'm like, how does this come out? Because I obviously I'm not talking to anybody and anything like that. So uh, that was just weird. And like you say, you reached out to me, but I don't know. I just think like with the whole situation where I just kind of felt like it was for me personally, like silence is golden. You know what I'm saying? Like I felt like I just had to kind of go dark for a little bit, just because simple fact is is that you know it's very easy to get your emotions involved. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, when my agent told me, you know, obviously he had a conversation with the team and kind of reported back to me about everything. It was very easy to be emotional because I'd I be lying if I didn't say I felt the way about it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'd, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't like, what? They, they asked for what? You know what I'm saying? So, but at the same time, like, there's no, like, you can't be emotional in business. Mm-hmm. Like, just being real, like, if you make an emotional decision within your business, more than likely it's going to be bad business. You know what I'm saying? So, I had to find a way to make sure that, you know, just to compartmentalize everything and just kind of keep my emotions out of it when I'm making these different decisions and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, it was, you know, it happened. You know what I mean? And I think we're in a good place right now. I think for what it's worth, you do a really good job separating the per- the emotional and the business side because it is, to, bro. it is super easy to get caught up. Like, I can only imagine the first time you're getting that phone call because at the end of the day, it is just business. It is just business. And, yeah. But I would have, I would almost imagine, like, you get a call like that and you're somebody who, what, you just finished your, what, seventh year? Seventh year, I'm going seventh on year, year eight. Never miss, haven't missed a game since you started in, you know, your first year. I think it was, like, week 10. You haven't yeah, missed exactly. a game. Correct, correct. And you've done all, you've done all, yeah, yeah, knock on wood. Yeah, we'll keep knocking on that. And you've done all this essentially for the team. Like, you're a leader, you're a captain, you've you've had your growth in the Titans organization. Right, everybody right. knows that everybody sees it. So you're a man in the Tennessee Titans franchise. Yeah, yeah so I, sure. I can almost assume your first emotion, of course, is going to be emotional because it's like, hang on now, what are we fucking talking about? Because <laughs> it, was, it was just one of those things where just like, I just didn't really understand it at first, you know what I mean? And I'm just like... Just for, just for clarity, they called and they were like, hey, would he take a pay cut? Is that what happened? So it was more like... So, you know, obviously, combine. Yeah. This is when the time where agents and finally get together with general managers. You know, they have a conversation about players and... New GM you know, comes in. They're yeah, figuring out GM, ways. I mean... Exactly. Like, yeah. have a conversation about... I'm guarantee you almost every player, especially a veteran player on our team, had a conversation with the GM during the combine mm-hmm. or whatever. And I guess that was throughout there. And mm-hmm. I don't know, like... Because, obviously, I wasn't in the room, so I don't really know how I was thrown out there. Because, honestly, I ended last year and was, like, you know, talking to my agent, like, bro, like, we need, I'm going to get extension. Like, I want to be here. Because, obviously, you know, well, I did. of course. Uh, listen, and you're, you're, a, you're, you're, a, you're a player. Like, yeah, exactly. that's like, what happens. If you're, if you're a good player in this league, you want to look at the year before your contract is up, and you want to, you're excited, especially if you have a hell of a year. Exactly. And you want you want to get on the phone excited selfishly for yourself. Like, 100%. that's not saying you're not a selfless player at all, but you're getting on the phone, and as a player, you're excited to know, like, hey, could we potentially make something happen and get it under extension? Exactly. Done? And mm-hmm. so, like I said, it was one of those things where, 
you know, at the end of the season, obviously we ended the season where it was, lost seven games straight. It's very disappointing. Uh, it was a stressful time as far as me being the player. It was very stressful. Because like you said, that was my, even just looking at my career, that was my first time ever having a losing season since like high school. I've never had like a losing season, especially the way it ended. Because uh, we had so much promise, you know, seven and three, beat Green Bay Thursday night, then we lost seven straight. It was miserable. Like yeah. it was never really been in that situation before. But, you know, I did uh, the, you know, the clean out day and the media and everything. And I'm like, bro, like, I don't want to play for another organization. Like, this is my legacy. I love it here in Nashville. And um, so, you know, I have conversations with my agent at the end of the season, like, because I kind of know, like, I I'm, I'm a very business savvy person. I'm kind of smart. Like, I understand that. And this is, and I feel like we can pivot after this, but like, kind of talking about John and John was trying to sell out as much as he could to build a championship team. And so for myself, like, I restructured my contract twice. The first time I think was to, to sign Clowney, and the second time was uh, I think after I went All Pro or something like that. Uh, restructured again. It might have been to sign Robert. It was something like that. Yeah. Because like you're trying to bring on talent, so you're trying to you know create cap space. But what that does is what most people don't realize. Is what it does is it increases your cap hit later in the, the life of your contract. So you know you see people report this guy's making this much money. That's not really how much money you're making, just account wise. Your cabin is here, but you may be making somewhere around here. Mm -hmm. And so that's a situation where, like you said, you get a new GM that comes in. He just looks at this, this sheet and just like, man, I have like, for example, you know, obviously you got released. Mm -hmm. Then Jones got released. Bug got released. He's looking like, okay, the, the roster's a little bit weird. We're a little bit older now. Mm -hmm. So, like, I got to clear, I got to clear cap space. I got to clear cap space from, from anywhere. And so, like I said, I mean, that was my idea of going into the conversation. So my agent called me. He was like, hey, it kind of went another way. So, like, obviously, I wasn't in the room, so I don't really know exactly how, like, was it a situation where it's like, hey, we want to do extension. They just went the complete opposite way. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe somewhere, some, you know what I'm saying? You know how... They could have said the first thing. You have no idea, like, the, right. the domino you know, effect of what happened. contract extension, you're doing is, like, Taylor, I, like, for example, let's use Taylor Mon, for example. I want to make $30 million. Yeah. And the team is like, well, we want you to make 15. Yeah. And then you somehow, you meet, and you know what I'm saying? It's like, right. you kinda, like everybody compromises. Classic business. bartering situation. Exactly. So I don't really know how that conversation went because I wasn't in the room. Mm. So, but when I got the news, I was like, wow. Like, honestly, I was like, I didn't know how I was going to go because I'm like, I've never seen, at least from my uh, preference or at least from my view, a player, you know, get asked for a pay cut and then, you know, usually more than likely get released or something like that. Mm, or, right. you know what I'm saying? You right. take the pay cut or it's like, you're gone. So I didn't really understand how it was going to happen. So I was kind of preparing my mind for every different scenario. And I just felt that for me personally, like, it's no point to try to jump in on a podcast or jumping on this because you may be still a little bit emotional right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to let this thing kind of, you know, discuss with your family, kind of really process everything from every angle uh, before you, you know, go talking about it and stuff like that. So... Especially publicly. Yeah. yeah man. You get out there publicly it's and start a weird saying deal, stuff. Bro. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 was, it was weird for sure. But like I so said, I kind of understand it. Like you said, I mean, Rand, I've had conversations with Rand, but like, I've never really been around Rand like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he don't really, obviously, he knows me because obviously he's watch, he's the general manager. Like, he watched tape, he watched football and stuff like that. But when you get to be around a guy, because he may be coming from a situation where it's like, you know, obviously, John was the general manager who paid me and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, how, Every position in this league is, I won't say it's different, but it's classified differently. Like, left tackle is a premium position. Mm. Quarterback is a premium position. Safety might not be as premium as a left tackle. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, this guy's cap hit is super high, playing a non-premium position or whatever. We got to find a way to get this down. So I kind of respect it from that point on the business side of it. Like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he might not understand why a guy like John Robinson gave me the contract that he did or wanted me to restructure it many times because who I am, not just as a player, but as a person as well in the community, mm -hmm. in the locker room and things like that. So, um, but like I said, I, I think Rand's a, a good guy. He's cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have any ill feelings towards the whole situation. It just, it kind of, it is what it is. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You kind of just... You've had time to process his emotions. Yeah, it is what like... it is, bro. It's like, you kind of just take it for what it is. And, you know, obviously, you know, they asked to take a pay cut and I said no. You know what I'm saying? It was just... And that was not just an emotional... Because I think people kind of, you know, people on social media be quick, like, yeah, KB, right. tell them no. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, I had nothing to do. It's all business stuff. You know what I'm saying? So um, I didn't like how it obviously leaked out there in the media that I asked to be released. Yeah. Because it was BS. I was like, what? 
you know what I'm saying? It's kind of painting a bad narrative, mm -hmm. just saying that, oh, I'm just disgruntled. I don't want to be here no more. Right, it makes he's you making, seem emotional. Making, yeah, he's making moves. Yeah. He's my guys. I don't want to be here no more. Because that's not, it's, you know, it's further from the truth. So that one thing I didn't like. But other than that, man, it's just business, man. We just. That's what happens, too. I mean, any type of that team national news, it usually gets leaked. And then it usually gets misconstrued as, like, you, the players usually upset about a lot of stuff. Yeah. Because right? uh, even even you come into a minicamp, um, I saw that there's, you know, articles written about, like, the reasoning of you not being at OTAs versus right. this whole contract kind of... I don't think you even at OTAs last year, were you? So I did. I was at OTAs, but, I, you know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, I, you know, I wasn't there. Yeah. I was on the family vacations and stuff like that. But, and that's another thing, too, like, and and I think, like you said, this is being an older player kind of understanding. And I've had a conversation. I remember we had conversations even that year. It was like, bro, like, when you're reporting, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. as an older player, you understand the game that... But you got to be in shape year round. Like this is not a thing where, because when I was a young player, this how I, this how I operated. It was like, okay, report dates probably you know April seventeenth. I'm probably gonna start working out maybe, you know, late February. Like I'm gonna give myself probably a month to really get ramp up, and then once we start, you know, you ain't really gonna be doing too much anyway. Mm -hmm. So it was like I'm gonna have two two or three months to really start working out. But me now, like bro, I was working out, bro. I ain't gonna lie, like the day after the Super Bowl, like. And I'm not just going crazy working out, but like I'm doing Peloton, I'm cycling and stuff, getting back in the shape, kind of, you know, working my way into it. And I've had thoughts about this for the past couple years. It was like being in the same team, being with Vrabel, like me and Vrabel, Vrabel could be in the meeting room coaching the team right now, and I kind of already know what he's going to say. Mm -hmm. When he's asking the question, you know, he's kind of, hey, asking a rookie, this, 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 I can already answer the question. Ben Jones would be the same way. And it's like, I had already kind of, my mind was like, the way I've been ramping up my training, how hard I train. You guys, anybody that's ever trained with me know how hard I go. It's like, you are in the ramped up. You're working out since mid-February, all the way up to April. Why taper it back? Why don't you keep going? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm already in meetings. I'm doing Zooms with, with Coach Book, Sage's coaches, kind of in tune with what's going on. So but I wanted to be able to keep going and keep pushing this thing, keep pushing the limits of my training uh, instead of just going back. It really had nothing to do with uh, the whole contract stuff because... I'd have had these conversations with myself psh, January. Like, bro, I'm probably going to just, like, train on my own as much as I can. Obviously, being in tune with what's going on, but, mm. you know, I'm five years in with this same defensive coordinator. That's the biggest thing you just said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know the, the entire defense. Is the, same, the defense is the same. And I, and I get, you know, the whole showing the young guys how to work and stuff like that, but I bring the young guys with me. You're like, Roger trained with me before he even reported. Mm -hmm. Like, I... I'm the one who be organizing. Like, I get these guys right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When they come to me, like, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, but as an older player, you really understand, like, this is a business. Like, it's yeah. a business. Yeah. And I think you're, I think, uh, like, what you're speaking to as well, like, any any player or any pro athlete that, like, com that understands, like, how to taper their training and is really, like, just bought all in from the get-go. Like, right. there are guys who fucking go and live the life and then they almost need to get back into a little bit of shit. Exactly. That's why coaches and the team want them to come back in because you get a pulse on them. You're not a guy that any any coach ever worries about, right? So you even knowing that yourself, like, when you have the right people around you and the right training staff and everything else and you know where you like to work out, you know what you do. Exactly. You could You could periodize all your training and ramp up the intensity at a different month versus like, hey, I need to be ready and in shape because they're going to fucking hit us with, you know, 10 gassers or something no, on exactly. day one of OTAs. Mm. When you don't need to be doing that in OTAs. However, on the team side, they want to know who might be in shape and who, who might not be in shape. And, and that's exactly but what it is. But the guys who are, worth the, who are worth the shit, they already know in their head, like, man, why... Why am I here doing stuff like this? This doesn't need to be happening for me in my training until later in the year. But then you also battle the being there around the team, the whole leadership exactly. and everything else. But like I said, I, I just think from, a, from at least from my perspective, you know, like you said, when you're looking at the whole training, it's, it's, it's really about trust. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think Vrabel and the coaching staff understands that this guy take care of his body. Mm -hmm. Like, I haven't missed the game my entire career. Bro, you mess with the saunas. You're always in that damn cold tub. And it's just, that's just in the building. Like, I, yeah, yeah, you, work you go home. this building <clears throat> from body work to chiropractic to, you know, a lot of different stuff. I mean, we can get in that too, but, you know, I feel like they trust and know that this guy's not just going to come in out of shape. He's not a guy that we ever really had to worry about his weight. He's not a guy we had to worry about when we're running gaslit in the practice. Like, he's out of shape. We got to run him some more. Like, I'm not the type of person. So my, my, and this is the, the business side of it, is like, my job is to be the best safety for the Tennessee Titans. Mm -hmm. 
point blank period. The pluses is he's a great leader. He's a great community leader. Like those are all things who make me who I am. But from my my contract and and and, and all that stuff is like to be the best player that you could possibly be for this team at all times, as long as you're on this team. And that's my that's that that's that's how I train. That's how I prepare myself. It's like I'm gonna try to be the best player that I can possibly be in. I know how to do that. Like, that's what I've been, you know, that's what I've been doing. It's the reason why I'm as consistent as I am because my routine in the offseason, my routine during the season is what it is. So, and I think that they trust that I know what I'm doing when it comes to training and all that stuff. The words, though, obviously this guy's going to come in in great shape and he's not going to miss a beat. He's going to know what's going on with the defense. Mm -hmm. He's going to come in and communicate and all that good stuff. So I think if they didn't trust me in that aspect, then maybe they would have had a, more of an issue of... if I, Obviously, it's all volunteer. I'm not saying that, right. but it might have been a different conversation. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right, yeah. right. Especially since you're such a proven vet anyway. I mean, again, seven yeah. years, same team. Community, all that stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Five years with, you know, same terminology and everything else. Yeah, man. There's not a whole lot of a reason for you to be at OTAs. From a, unless it's like a leadership perspective. And honestly, like, even... I think, like, OTAs, and Vrabel would tell you, like, OTAs is about learning. Mm -hmm. It's about especially if you're a new guy coming on the team from another uh, team, learning, like, the verbiage, speaking the same language, and also just for young rookies that's just getting to the league. Like, it's about learning the defense. Like, nobody's winning the job in OTAs. Mm -hmm. Like, as much as the, people want to put articles out there, what's the position battles like? There's no position battles going on in OTAs. Right. It's about learning, and obviously guys, and you still getting this, because it's a nine-week program. Guys are still getting back into shape, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get in the best shape. And then, you know, we always talk, and coach always talk about, uh, those five or six weeks that you're away during the summertime, it's like, it's not a time to chill and vacation time. It's time to continue to ramp up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think guys just, you know, it's about learning. And so I think that it's also a plus that some of these younger guys are able to go up there and get the reps that I probably would have been taking if I was there. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Because yeah. they're getting more hands-on work. Yeah, I mean, we know, like, the best teams are teams that have depth. Like, you can have a, a good starter, but if a guy goes down, obviously nobody wants to go down, but you know, especially for safeties, you know what I'm saying? You need two or three safeties. Like, last year, I think that there was probably, obviously, Hooker, I think he missed, like, eight games. Or he missed a few games last year. But, bro, I had, like, four different safeties play with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, but if they wasn't able to get those reps and things like that, I mean, it, it's just, it's challenging. Yeah. So you right. kind of understand, like, for a guy that was playing nickel this week and now he's playing safety this week or a guy we just signed during training camp or a guy that doesn't really have a lot of practice reps throughout the week or throughout the season. And then one week, two or three guys go down, then he's the starter and he's like, hey, KB, like, hey, talk to me out here now. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. You kind of understand it. It's like, it, it, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's hard, bro. Like, so I think during this time, it's really good for some of these younger guys to be able to go in and get these reps because, you know, you, you you also have players, and it goes for every position where, like, guys are super sharp in the meeting room. Mm -hmm. Guys spitting back to what the coach is saying and everything, and then you get out in the field, and it's like, bro, can you put the classroom onto the totally field? Totally different yeah. game. It's, it's faster, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Then, I mean, you talk about from practice, and you go from preseason, it's a little bit faster. Then the regular season is way faster, so I just think it's always good for those guys to get those reps, man. Dude, preseason is the biggest form of trickery. When you're first, <laughs> when you first get in the league, because you play preseason, like, if you're playing the third, fourth quarter, like, bro, that's really like, that much different from college. Bro, you think it's sweet. Straight. You think it's yeah. sweet out here. Like, then week kinda... one hits, and you're like, holy fuck. Bullets are bro. flying. I remember our rookie preseason. I had a really good rookie preseason. I caught two picks in the preseason. Yeah. My first game at Nissan, caught a pick, almost pick six. Like, juking people and all. I'm like, bro, it's sweet out here. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I'm about, about to be. We're really there. Yeah. yeah. Out here. You know what I'm saying? I'm him. And then our first <laughs> game, uh, we played the Vikings, bro. My first tackle was against AP. Really? I was ecstatic, bro. But then, like, you you realize, like, then I think, like, the next game, um, I don't remember, it might have been the Raiders or something like that. And I remember I was coming down, fitting the hole or whatever. Pause, but uh, <laughs> God, God was pulling, and it was, uh, it might have been Osimile. Uh, remember okay. Clutch Osimile? Yeah. Bro, and I'm trying to fit him up. God literally tossed me probably about three yards. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, this is the league. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just like, it's, just, it's a little different. Because like you said, you think preseason is like, damn, like, it's sweet out here. Like, But you don't realize, like, all these other guys, they're fighting for spots and stuff like that, too. But Yeah, you get with those twos and threes, it's more of a bloodbath. Like, it's like, bro, I'm out here. Yeah. yeah. I'm out here making plays. Right. My, I mean, my head, like, you know, but the nerves are up. Like, you're just on high alert the entire time. Bullets are flying the entire when time. You, when you play <laughs> ones on the sideline, yeah. they got their hats on there. Who are you yes, on? Bro, yeah. You're yes. really feeling yourself. They got shoes on. Everyone's, everyone's way more joking and all that. 
That's hilarious. the only positive about play uh, practicing against another team because you know, like the starters really aren't like, hey, we got to get through these two days. Exactly. But for the game, we get to literally watch a football game on the sidelines and hang out. Literally, everyone's chirping, having a great 100%. time. Like, hey, you gonna try to get a hot dog yeah. or a piece of pizza in the lo- in, in yeah. the locker room during halftime? Like, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where it's at. Dude, <laughs> nah, for real. I, it was funny because yeah, I remember even Ray was first a uh, year or two. Like, I think we went against the Patriots uh, one year, and hey, that was when Tom. Tom was there in the yeah, in the red zone. That. that was about Tom in the red zone. Went, I think seven for seven, seven. Bro, was killing us. The first day. He was I'm talking fun. about we was, we was going like some red two yeah. defense, and bro, he was literally just looking off everybody like, oh, just cover too easy. Yeah. Look this way, touchdown, dude. It was, it was, it was something like, bro, he was too fucking us up, bro. It was funny because he would go. Defense was up, and then we would go. So that we like we'd get to watch. I was watching like man. Tom's still him. Yeah, he's yeah, still fucking not, him. It was incredible. It but was I remember insane. We practiced very obviously, you know. And that's one thing about practicing another team. Like the first day, like guys are going hard, emotions are flying, stuff like that. And then, you know, then the next day, you go out there and it's like, oh yeah, I got the day off. You know, a lot of veterans, it's like whole starting defense. We still out here practicing. We yes. look at the side. Oh, Devin Dude, Tampa Bay last chilling. year. Bruh, Jack, all way. them dudes. They all like the first day they they did it. It was a bloodbath out there. The next day, it's like, yo, who am I going against here? And then all those dudes being shoes and hanging that out. Big fight broke out in their practice. Yeah. Jeff and Fournette and. You kind of wish that would have happened like Indy. See, and it's funny because I've learned when I was a younger player, I used to try to jump into stuff or like try to be the one to break. Oh, just chill, chill. Like, then you kind of learn, like, bro, just let him have it. Like, it just kind of back up. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, bro, you I'm know, not Braves gonna me. fly in there anyway. But he did, though. Especially, remember, well, Braves, especially Braves, especially Braves, yeah. well, you know, yeah, you know, Jeff. Remember, he was, because yeah, he was, he was, that was part of the skit, too. Like, yeah, yeah, he was like holding Jeff back and talking to him and trying to calm him down. Somebody got punched out. It was funny. That shit is wild. He did get punched. Was it? It was a Fournette, right? Because Fournette was on, was talking about it on the bus. Yeah, but who did he get punched by? Because I, I think he did say he got hit. I just can't remember who he got hit by. Yeah, me either. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But that skit Fournette was funny, was funny he about was that. Like Coach T, or it was like some coaches like kind of went down like randomly. Like it was yeah. hilarious, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was training camp. We were talking about in the last podcast how those practice against other teams are like the biggest bloodbath. That's harder than any game. No, nah, they are for sure. And the second day is always the day where like. People really get the fightings. Because yeah. the first day, you know, the coach, they, they bring you up. We're going to have a good, clean practice and stuff right. like that. It's always then, the opposite coach. But then the second day is usually like that big special teams day. Yeah. Like, the best time is the punt. Because you got you got the gunners on the outside. Everybody's chirping them up. Like, oh, got to go, go. one on one in front of the, everybody. one on one is, is lit. Mm. And they're like, obviously, you know, guys are tired. You know what I'm saying? Like, when we uh, the year before, it was funny. We, play, we actually practiced against Tampa two years ago. None of our offense was there. Everybody was, like, either hurt. Like, literally, we didn't have anybody. Like, it was Tannehill, and it might have been one starting offensive of lineman, and we had a couple of receivers. Like, the whole offensive of lineman was, like, yeah. he just, like, kind of stayed back. Or whatever, everybody was rehabbing. We had a guy fly in into Tampa. Like, he was, he got cut. They, they were like, hey, you're back on the team. We don't have yeah, enough guys. Brought him in. He practiced the two days, did the did the preseason game, and then they cut him the next day. Oh, and so, I think we brutal. actually we actually go to uh, Minnesota. We go to Minnesota this year. And I would say... I love practicing against other teams at home. Mm-hmm. Going there is a different ball game. Because, you know, you kind of... Training camp is one of those deals where, you know, at the practice, your family get to run up and all that. You kind of enjoy that stuff. When you're going somewhere, you're in a hotel, you don't have the luxury of, like, oh, I can get in a hot tub. And you got, you know, you kind of got the comfort like of your You're, changing in the weight room. Bro, like, yes. you literally just... It's, it kind of reminds you back, like, high school or college or whatever. It's like, bring your, bu- you bring your pads on the bus... You get on there, you're sitting there for however long it takes you to get there, and you just get off the bus. It's like, okay, it's time to start warming up. Because, you know, as an older player, it's like, bro, I need a hot tub. I need yeah. Right, you need it all. I need to do something, you know what I'm saying? And so, obviously, and then Tampa was extremely hot. Too. So we get down there, yeah, and we practice in. brutal. And I don't, this was like, it went viral at the time, but, like, they were doing one-on-ones with AB was still on Tampa. And our guy, Chris Jackson, the cornerback on the team, like, dudes get to fighting. Like, because I'm over here covering with the tight ends and everything. And then, like, I'm not even understanding what even happened until after we're in the meeting room and, like, you know, guys are kind of on break going on their phone. And I just see this picture of, like, A.B. punching one of our DBs in the face. And Smoked it was, him, too. He did. I ain't gonna lie. It was, it was, I think this is it right here. So it was, like, it was this It was this picture. And then, like, the literally, the, it was funny because it was, like, a meme. It was, like, one picture was that one. And then the next picture was him connecting in yeah. his face. And the, like, the guy was like this. Tough look. And I was like, bro, that's a tough look, bro. But then I'm kind of getting on the DBs, like, bro, where was y'all at? Like, just let my guy yeah, get Yeah, you got to do like, something. But this is training camp, bro. Like, yeah. we're, this is supposed to be a whole team out brawl, like, on some baseball stuff. Like, everybody's supposed to run up and start brawling. Like, right. 
Nobody knew what happened. Obviously, AB got thrown out of practice and everything, but like, and then he, it was funny because he got thrown out of practice and out of nowhere, like during the team period, he reappeared back out there <laughs> running up. It was different, bro. He reappeared. Literally Yo. reappeared. Like, it, 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 was, it was crazy. That is there. so nuts, man. Do you guys get to go to Minnesota? Yeah, we're going to Minnesota That's this year. so much better than going to Tampa. It has to be. Oh, it's going to be so much bro, nicer. Tampa was so hot, man. Hot. The weather up there was weather of Minnesota. It's funny it's because be I remember nice, Tom man. Brady, uh, obviously he was a quarterback at the time, and I remember we was doing, like, it was like in between the special teams period. And, you know, we're over there just on the sideline kind of talking to the DB coach, and I remember Tom was coming out the bubble. Like, he's out there in the AC, he's chilling, obviously with the court air in the bubble, and then as soon as it's about the time to be 7 on 7, like, he's coming out of the bubble. I was like, yeah. oh, that's the man right there. Like, the man. That is the... F- there's I'm got- not about to sit out here in the sun while they're on special teams yeah. in the bubble. Yeah. I said, oh, this guy's the man. Is there he anybody got- else you've ever seen besides Tom Brady that you've been like, holy fuck, that's so-and-so? Uh, like, on the, like, playing games? No, like, practicing, yeah, practicing, playing, whoever, but, like, Like, you get me, on the field and you're like, oh, that's so-and-so. Yeah, that's, that's legit. Trail sucks. Holy shit, that's actually Tom Brady. I mean, nobody, definitely nobody as big as Tom for sure. No, Tom's the biggest of all time. But like, I've like I've met like a, like for example, this was two years ago, and this was when the Super Bowl was in L.A. and I was out there for a couple of days, and you know, athletes first in my agency, and they had like this little mixer deal. It's kind of just hanging out and talking to Reggie Wayne. You know, I was having a conversation, and then like Reggie was like, "Yeah, hey, Reed, you know what I'm saying." I'm just sitting here talking to Ed Reed, like, and he was like, yeah, you know, like, Dean P used to tell me a lot about you, like, really, ex- you know, respect your game. And I was just like, bro, this is Ed Reed we're talking that about here. That is fucking dope. That is cool as fuck, bro. That like, is I was awesome. hard not to really fanboy yeah, it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I was just like, you know, yeah, I appreciate it, you know what I'm no. saying? Much love, bro, much love. Yeah. Did you give him flowers? You give him flowers? Or, hey, man, I'm a big fan? Or did you leave it alone? I did, but I, yeah. I didn't want to. cool. Because, you know, you kind of get in a situation where he probably gets this all the time. Yeah. So I kind of want to separate myself from but also the, the same regular time, fanboy. Like, like, I feel like even even uh, players, even like Ed Reed, like, you know, he he's probably watches done. your game, knows you're good. Like, oh, I'm fucking, he's not, he might not be thinking I'm talking to Kevin Byer, but he's sitting there building, like, a relationship nah, right, right. with you. Mm. So yeah, where when you when like you say, give him his flowers, he's probably like, For ah, sure. And like it. I said, Dean Pease was, uh, was our defensive coordinator for two or three years, and uh, he used to always show me Ed Reed highlights and just what they used to do as a defense. And, like, I used to be trying to do my disguises, like, Ed Reed, like, oh, this is what he's doing on this play right here? Yeah. Okay, bet. Let me go ahead and put this in my... My memory. Yeah, Reed right was here. fucking nasty. Nasty. He was the truth, bro. Was, and yeah. obviously, I fanboy over Troy Polamalu. I met my second. This might have been my second year. It was like a Thursday. Remember, we played a Thursday night game. We had the Smurf jerseys and yeah, AB Pop, like against Jacksonville. The pass oh like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So like that night in the meeting room, like uh, Dick LeBeau brought in like Casey Hampton and some of the old Steelers, and he brought Troy in. You know what I'm saying? That was like Troy and Avery was like, and Brian Dawkins like my favorite sages of all time, <sighs> and like. I know you've worn out the YouTube video Weapon X of Brian Dawkins. Of, of course. Bro, you know what's funny, bro? That funny thing you just brought you that play up. Play that, Jack. So listen. Bro, one of the best I hype quarter- videos. I was a quarterback in high school, right? Mm-hmm. i never forget the first day my coach was like, hey, like, because I was running track, I was getting faster. You know what I'm saying? He was mm-hmm. like, I think you look really good on them hashes. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, safety? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not something I thought about. I was like, of course, you know, anything yeah. for the team. Anything for the team. No, real talk. What a line. Bro, what one a of line. the first videos I ever played, like, when I started getting excited about playing safety, was this video right here on YouTube. Bro. Weapon X. That's, that's one of the best ones of all time. He had, like, the little symphony song in the background. Yes, bro. Bro. This guy's a fucking lunatic. I had guys before, I used to play this, I used to play that song, this is like the little symphony song on my iPad. You know, everybody's had an iPod. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Oh, be out of your dog on chest. Give it to me. And you just be hype watching that fucking YouTube this video, guy bro. That's insane, bro. And, but now I'm older now. I realize, like, bro, this guy was on. I ain't saying that he was on something crazy. But Coke. But he was on, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Coke. Nothing wild, like, but listen, Coke. The most intense pre <clears throat> workout you probably can take. That's all. That's what you I'm going to say. You know, some of yeah. teammates are like, hey, like, B Dog, calm the fuck down. You know, you know there were dudes in there like, he's too much. Do you feel that? I was so hyped in high school <laughs> watching this, but even just hyped. thinking about it, like, bro, this guy was crawling out of the tunnel. Yeah. Bro, think about it, T- Taylor. You know how we are, you know, you do your pregame, the, the introductions. Yeah. And guys are kind of sitting out there, Taylor Lewan, hey. Yeah. Clapping. Some guys don't even get the dap, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You stick your hand out there. But to see a dude just like, just imagine the smoke comes out and the guy just starts to crawl and just start doing it. <laughs> God's probably been like, yo, what the bro, fuck? Like, what three goes Wolverine. Like, bro, it what is be, going on right now? Towards the end, it had to be dope. But when, the first time he did it, could you imagine the first time he like came out and crawled? The guys were like, 
Bro, like, what the fuck is he doing out there? What is there? going on, bro? What is like, he doing out there, dude? Whatever you just took? Yeah. Give me some of that you shit. You seen the interview of Spike's talking about him? He's talking about, I want to see how bad they want to play today, Spike. I want to see how bad. Hits him over the morning. Hits him over the, like, the, on the sidelines. Yeah, he's like, good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's like, he what is this man yeah. on? He didn't cuss. Like, he's like, like this is what he said. He, he said, "God bless." Like, Dog on chest, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like, he would, like he never cussed, but like, bro, but there, I feel like hints that he if was. You don't, bro, like, if you don't curse. Ability. If you don't curse, you can't be saying things like "frick." Like nah, exactly. uh, Bernard Pollard would say things like "frick" and "shoot." Our DB coach, uh, I'd be mean, like, "Bro, do the same thing." You gotta say something cussed. cooler than that. I'm no, but he did the dog on chest thing is is badass. Nah, bro, he was be. Crazy, dog. Like the energy, like it's 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 not sustainable. It's all no, no doubt, no doubt. It's not sustainable. Like he was, he was, he was one of the best, man. Different type. And of playing in bro. Philly too with that lunatic fan base. And he had the dark visor. The and dark visor goes too. crazy. Yeah, bro. He was built like yeah. that. Bro, this guy was the truth. Bro. I know. That's what you. That, that crumpler right that's there. That's what you get there when you are like a shorter dude. You have the ability to have like you look a little more stat. Yeah. You know. And he got that thick neck. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> I just want it. But nah, thick I mean, neck, that boy. thick ass neck. Nah, but like, crazy. so did uh, Takeo Spikes. Yeah, Spikes no, for real had that. Yeah. He had them people had must to be like, like bubble 240, out. 240, yeah, yeah, yeah. He laid him oh. out. He had to be like 250, Audrey Crumpler. Just nuts. Yeah, he was a different type of cat. Bro. Besides the Titans, when you're looking at fan bases, like, what's a fan base you're like, man, I like, that'd be sick to get behind. So it's funny, man. When I was coming out, like, I grew up a Steelers fan. Like, it's funny, I was in Philadelphia. But grew up a Steelers fan. Like, my family didn't like that. But I remember being at the Senior Bowl, and, like, Steelers, like, one of the one of the only teams that, like, just didn't meet with me. Like, I was kind of hurt by that. Damn. Like, I love Mike Tomlin. And uh, obviously got a lot of respect for him. You know, we've had conversations now. But at this time, I was like, bro, like, no, they need a safety. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny because they actually drafted a safety in the second round, like, a couple picks before me. I was like, damn. The safety they drafted was the guy who started next to me in the Senior Bowl. No oh, shit. Yes, bro. It was hilarious. So, but now nah, I mean, like Pittsburgh. Were you, obviously, were, you, were you better than him? I mean, I'm not gonna say that, but I mean, yes. I'm still in the league. You know what I'm saying? That's no, there's no shade to no, him. No shade. It's just you know, but sometimes that's the reality the wrong, we're dealing with. Sure, I'm one. sure if they can, if they can redo it, <laughs> yeah, he might reconsider. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, but no, like obviously, you like you said, Philly's fan base is intense. I remember we played a preseason game there. I think it was Vrabel's our first, second year preseason game. Yeah. Three fights broke out in, in the stands. And then Very obviously the, the deal this year where, like, the fans was cussing out the owners and, like, that's, that stuff is real, bro. Like That game with AJ, that had to be crazy. fucking oh, tough to watch. Yeah. Especially two in a row. Were you on him at all? No. Did he, did he get I, you? No, I, I was on him once. It was like a play where, like, we sent a corner blitz and I was, like, supposed to be, like, a tight one-third. I was supposed to pretty much be a thirds player, but... When you watching the film, like, I was playing him man to man from like ten yards off or whatever. Yeah. He, like broke a slant, but I didn't really cover him at all. Like other than that one play, but it was very tough because it was like obviously he was destroying us. <laughs> no but question. At the same time, like being a friend of him, yeah, kind of happy for him a little bit. Yeah, like just a little bit. You know right. what I'm saying? Like after it was like, well, like you know. We let him go to the Eagles, and like this way, like what do what, what we expect? Like, well, you, like, dude, you had to know going into that week, like this man's probably gonna try to go off on us. One hundred percent. I mean, yes. that's oh, how everyone you know how knew how AJ is. Like, yeah. right, AJ had that circled before the season no even question. started. That's why his I mean, first question to GM once he got traded was like, "Do we going, play the Titans yeah. this year?" Going up to the goalpost, whipping the goalpost. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it was, man. I was like, hey, when he caught that, that touchdown was... and they called it back, and then, and then the next play, again. that shit was nuts, dude. I mean, it sucks because, like, we're sitting here and you got to relive this a little bit, but, like... Nah, it definitely sucks. You got to be... Ha like you said, you got to kind of be happy right for him. That slant? Yeah, it was a slant. But he was, like, in a cover three, but, you know... See, that's the kind of shit that PFF would look at and be like, minus KB, he should be yeah, playing up more. He was man-to-man, -man, yeah. but, like, you know, it's PFF, hey. KB's a top three safety, according to I PFF. know, I saw the notes. Yeah, I know, oh. so it's funny because I actually had an interview with PFF and I told him, I was like, you know, when it works out good and, like, PFF is great and you high... Retweet. I mean, I'm the best safety in the league. PFF. Yeah, yep. But when your grade is terrible, it's like, bro, they don't know what they talking about. Like, what, what is PFF? We had a about? whole fight with them during the Super Bowl. <laughs> we, I legit told them, I was like, you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> no, really. They're like, maybe 10, 15 plays, we don't know. Like, it's, right. it's a gray area. It's like, bro, 10, 15 plays, if you like the player and you exactly. give them a plus, that grade, you're now in the 80s. Exactly. It doesn't... And that's another thing. I just think, like, when you're grading the safety, like, for example, you're giving the safety a cover, a cover grade, coverage grade, or whatever it may be, like, 
oh, this safety was targeted this many times. And it's like, were those man-to-man targets? Right. Or was this guy in zone? And no offense to a linebacker. It's like, the linebacker didn't get no depth on this play. Right. And right. so he's hitting the honey so, hole. So down but you were the closest. Look, but you were the closest guy. Yeah. I was, you was a deep, you may have been a deep middle safety, but you had a good break. And the linebacker didn't get no depth. They put it right in the honey hole, and you made the tackle. Oh, that's your target? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how are you grading that? You right. know what I'm saying? So. They don't know. But hey, top three safety point according to PFF. Congratulations. That's big. Nah, I appreciate it. That's yeah, big. Man. I appreciate it. We will clip this and post that too, like top three. No, hundred yeah. percent. I mean Do you gotta feel a little bit slighted. Cause you're you're hey, you're a good ball player. Nah, nah, for sure. But there's anyway. been see this, this like, a couple of Pro Bowls here and there, a couple all pro situations. It's like about fan bases. Yeah. Like, we that's... know that I think anybody would test to if I play for the Cowboys or the Steelers. Or maybe the Chiefs or something like that. Mm-hmm. Eagles. It wouldn't, it wouldn't just be, or Eagles, or whatever it may yeah. be. Like, it wouldn't be just all, oh, this guy's a really good safety. Like, I would have multiple all pros, multiple Pro Bowls, because it was my second year in the league, first team all pro, Pro Bowl, led the league in picks. Came back the next year and had four picks, two sacks. I balled out again the next year. And usually, once you get in the first time, usually yeah. kind of just rolls in off of respect. Yeah. That same year, I think, um, one of my favorite safeties, uh, Eric Weddle, got in. I think. I mean, I think he got in that year. He was old then. And I think old, he may have like one pick that year or something like that. It was some weird, you know. what I'm saying yeah. it was something like it was like. And then after 2019, where I had five picks that year, balled out again. Like I'm talking about, we're putting consistent numbers together. Yeah. And I didn't get in. I was like, bro, I'm, I don't even care no more. Like. Really. Yeah, I got. You got hurt. Was, you got hurt so bad. You're like, I can't. I can't get much. emotional like, about I this. Yeah, I get high I mean, on this. It was just one of those things. I'm just bro. like, bro, like. I mean. How many Pro Bowls you got? I got two. Got two. But every time I went to the Pro Bowl, I was a first team All Pro. You know what I'm saying? Like, which is so weird. I, but I'm saying I had to get to that top, top, like first team All Pro to get that Pro Bowl vote. Yeah. And I just kind of understand it. Like, it is what it is. Like, we know Nashville doesn't have the biggest market when it comes to football. And I, it, I think it is the smallest media market. It is. It's like I, I know, for example, I remember when we first got when I first got drafted. Like they told you, like we're like bottom three, bottom five or something. Yeah. It's probably went up a little bit more since then, but it's still not. At the top, you know what I'm saying? So you almost had to really go, like, crazy for, like, the fans and everybody to really pay attention because... And let's even talk about Pro Bowl voting. You know, as players, we vote in the Pro Bowls. Now they do it mobile when you do it on your phone. Mm-hmm. So for me personally, I stay in tune with what's going on around the league as far as other states, how they're balling. But I have some guys on my team be like, bro, so who's balling this year at safety? Like, I don't... I know this guy. I know right. that guy. Right, you're in the and room. You just vote based upon guys that you know. And this is right? the last 10 minutes of a position meeting yeah, like, before you go out to practice, so you have to get it done. Right. You're looking at stats like, hey, who's uh, who's who's doing well? They don't, doing well. they don't do it no more. It used to be where, like I said, they'll bring that piece of paper in with the stats and everything. No, now it's just, it's a battle on your phone, and they have two guys from each team. They don't even have their stats on there. It'd just be, vote for this guy, vote yeah. for that guy. And so you would literally go down the list. So, like, for example, I don't really know, like, guard play as much as I know what's in the back end. Like, when I watch film, I know for some defensive linemen, they only watch the end zone copy. Yeah. I had to watch the wide copies. I had to see the coverage, the pass concept, and stuff. So I don't really know, like, when I go down the list and I vote for Pro Bowl guards, I don't even know why they got DBs voting for guards and, and right. offensive line play, because it's like, well, I know this guy, and I know that guy's nice. And it's like, bro, they be like, vote for your first mm-hmm. choice, two first choice, two second choice. Mm-hmm. For the two second choices, it's like, I'm probably just going to pick the guys that I know. Zach Martin. Yeah. He's probably, he's probably, obviously, he's a Hall of Fame player. Yeah. But it might be another guy's more deserving this year. But I may not really be in tune with, like, oh, this guy's really balling. But a defensive line might be like, hey, this guy's balling. But I'm in the sauna doing this. You know, I'm just chilling. Right. Like, vote for yeah, that like, guy. I, I, I want to know the people say over with. You know what I'm right, saying? Like, right, right, right. Vote for this guy, vote for that guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. And the top 100 is similar, too, because you literally go into, like, the kitchen and they're like, hey, fill out the sheet. Bro, I, maybe like 10 like dudes. 20, right? You, you fill the top, top 20, 20 and then they really that. Never put 100 together. The top 100. Really? And I don't even know how this, like, how they come up with this list because I've never voted. There's never, like, a, a league-wide thing that comes out, vote for your top 100 players. Yeah. Like, remember, it's always be, like they hand you a sheet. It's been a sheet to be sitting in, in, in the cafeteria. Yeah, for breakfast. Like the top 20 guys, I'm like, if a guy felt like filling out, they'll do it. But, like, nobody really paid, paid any mind. Yeah. So, like, who's really the person that's really voting for this? And you can usually tell who actually did vote because whoever they put number one is usually the person that was voting. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, Derek, hey, Derek Henry, top. No. And then sure. you all, what, like, what are all the elements that go into the Pro Bowl voting? Media, so, uh, a third media, a third coaching, a third players. 
But I think that, immediate, I don't immediate, think that, immediate includes fans. I, I guess. No. Yes, no, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. So it's actually not even. It's it's fans. Oh. One third fans. One third coaches. And one third players. Yeah, but I got a conspiracy theory that the fan vote is just strictly for interaction on the internet. Oh, 100 percent. Because I don't think I, I with all Pro Bowls I ever made, never once was in the top ten of voting for AFC for AFC tackles. No, for sure. I believe that for sure. Yeah, I do. I think that's all. I like how KB just. Yeah, hundred percent. I believe 100%. that for sure. Nah, because I mean, at the end of the day, I think that you know, and then also you know, and Vrabel say this like it depends on like who team has the best record like. Records are a big the deal. Year we beat the Ravens in the in the playoffs. They had like thirteen guys in the Pro Bowl. Right, and it's like the first I know year. That year for a fact, because I was right, right, right. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm looking at the guys that got in. I'm like, I'm you got, sure it? got it? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it's kind of what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, your your rookie year was our first nine and seven after those two abysmal years, and oh, yeah, that's yeah. when we had like ten dudes in the like. I think Rack Jarrell. Delaney was in there. I made it. And DeMarco Murray. DeMarco Murray made DeMarco it. Murray got Kern, Kern got made it. Like, we had, like, seven, eight dudes. Uh, and Brandon Titans media market. BT was there. Yeah. That was a Trey fun Wick, That's hilarious. BT, yeah. Man. BT was that boy. Man. But, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's weird, bro. Like, Do you remember BT coming, thinking I was actually gay when he came to the Titans? No. You don't remember that? He thought thinking, he was gay? So, we were, he was with the Raiders the year before. Yeah. And I remember saying, like, we were on field goal and i said to him like hey man if you didn't have that face mask i would literally i'd kiss you you're so cute you're this that and bt goes up to ben jones when he first gets to the titans like it was like otas and he's like hey what's the deal with 77 is he like for real and ben's like oh yeah he's gay but like we don't it's not out like we just kind of yeah, keep it to ourselves and we're tied around here sure. I know. so i wrote him a note i was like hey can't wait to get to know you so cute blah blah, blah. oh my god big hugs tiny kisses type of thing and i put it in his locker and bro he was it didn't. It he took us like three, four months to even get. Well, yeah, it took us a couple months to even get back to neutral, bro, where BT we could even become funny, friends. Bro. He was hilarious because BT was like our third safety, and it was funny. I remember we'll be in during defense. You know, obviously got offense up and defense or whatever, and so while the defense is up, BT would literally just be riding a bike on the side, like, like bro, I'm not getting in. What do you mean, like, just ride the bike? Like, he yeah, was like, I just I'm here to play special teams. Like, yeah, he was a so dog too. Knew his dog. knew his role. Yeah. For him and sure. him and DB Bates, on the side. Yeah, yeah. Bates is the same way. Yeah. Bates was the ultimate hype man. Bates and David Questenberry were the two best hype men on the sidelines. Or one like a guy like Bates is a guy that you need on your team just for that aspect of a guy that just don't give a damn about anything. Nothing. Right. In that energy on the sideline. He's any literally running up and down. Happening, he's fucking doing yeah, his little yeah. thing. Bro, like he's any ready. Good team I've ever played, any really good team, you always have just this one guy on the team that just literally just doesn't give a fuck about anything. Doesn't yeah. give a fuck about anybody. You need that. Yes. But when times get Talking rough. shit to the right. refs. Bro. To the refs. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Fucking get me. Like, hey, Bates, what are you doing? Yeah. He's in the media. Yeah. Like, bro, he'd be in there like Paul being there. He hated Paul. Like, hated him and they hated Paul. He tried to fight Paul one time. For real. In the locker room. Yeah. I literally had to be like, hey. Uh, it was after a game. It was like a Monday or a Tuesday. It had to be like 2019-ish. Because Bates, like, was in his face. And I literally had to come up and be like, Bates, hey, it's not that serious. Like, all right. he let him be the villain. It's but all they good. they were going toes, too, after the game, after a game on the weekend. So I think it carried over and leaked into the week. Yeah. Because he did fucking He would hate literally Paul. just blast the loudest, most vulgar music when the media comes in on purpose. The words yes. when the media had to be like, hey, man, can you tell this guy to cut the music down? Like, we can't hear anything. Like, it is the best. Dude. We would try to get the aux. We, yeah. Uh, <laughs> It was funny. We man. would do the same thing in the O line corner. We would play like loud, like screamo music or like some weird Adam Sandler yeah, parody yeah. music or something like that. That was just a fun time, though. Yeah, no. Nah, Bates, Bates is he's all he's time. a locker room guy. Nah, he's he's a locker room guy. He's definitely all time, all time. Because I like you don't meet a lot of guys, especially in the NFL, that aren't like at least try to tote the line between being politically correct. Like he just doesn't care. Does not care. And I probably respect him more of any. He's probably the most authentic guy I've ever met because. He just authentically 100% him. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. Loves doesn't matter what, doesn't matter if he's in front of Vrabel. Like, if he was around the president of the United States, he would be exactly, I don't think he would change up who he is at all. Right. Like, like he, like, he's going to treat like, so treat, funny treat, to see. Treat the gender, like, yeah. That's Bates, bro. Like, can't do nothing but respect it. Loves Kevin Gates. Love Gates. <laughs> Loves Kevin him, Gates. Man. I want to know how he feels about, about Gates him. now because Gates, yeah. Gates been tripping. What's he been doing? Bro. He's just horny. But bro, no, no, being horny. I've always known he's horny though. It's in no, his music. No, 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 no. He's been tripping. Like he put Kevin a Gates, video. He was, he, Kevin Gates was fat, right? And then he got real skinny. Yeah. No, no. no, no, no I think he got skinny though. He got skinny. He's like talking about meditation now and stuff he like that. He's like enlightened. Like yeah, that. he's like an enlightened no, cat he's now. He's always been about horniness. No, bro. He he's put, always he, been around about he horniness. Put a video on Instagram. I don't know if y'all can pull this. So he put a video on Instagram probably a couple weeks ago, 
was like talking about how he's about to take like a, a, a break off social media. And like, bro, I don't even want to it's so it's funny as shit, but he was like, said, you know, I'm about to get my assistant to handle all my social media, but do me two favors. Find me that one person I told on and find that one person said they sucked my dick or some shit yeah. like that. Yeah. Bro. No, he didn't. If y'all can find this video, bro, please find it, dog. Listen, because I didn't even do it any justice, bro. Because you're listening no, hey, to the video. Oh, Kevin Gates, not Darren Bates. No, nah, no, nah, Kevin Gates. I thought you said something else. I thought you yeah, said that's... someone who sucked my dick. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Yeah. That was worse. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, you know, I mean, yeah. I don't know which worse, but it's pretty bad. As far as being horny, like, that's probably the... Yeah. the if we're talking about bro, levels of horny, that's the horniest level. Dick in me. Dog. Hey, I'm that like, is bro, a lot. Like... Did anybody find him? I don't think so. Well? Yeah, I wonder what, da what Darren's stance is on this now. That's what I'm curious of. I bet you Darren's even more into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Boys... We are back. Georgia Boot, shout out Georgia Boot, no free shout outs, designed for the longest shift and the toughest job. The core of Georgia's messaging relies on delivering boots that are as comfortable as they are tough. Boots that you can wear uh, from work to the bar, blue collar comfort right out of the box. Whether you're working on the front line, fixing that shelf in your closet, grilling out back, these Georgias are the best boot for the job. Georgia Boot, uh, they're designed for rugged, demanding work environments that are built to last, making them ideal for workers in various industries. Georgia boots are designed with comfort in mind, featuring cushion, insoles, and supportive technology for all-day comfort. Use code BUSSIN for 20% off at georgiaboots.com. Again, code BUSSIN, B-U-S-S-I-N, at georgiaboots.com. Back to the episode. I might have to jump in the raw room. I might have to jump in the raw room and see how he feels about this. Yeah, jump in the raw room, man. Darren, raw room. Darren came out saying, uh, of all the podcasts, sports podcasts, he beat the fuck out of everybody. I seen That's that. DB. Yeah, he goes, he goes, Taylor's that got that funny. knee. I go after that knee immediately. That was funny. That was funny as fuck. But listen, Bates. <laughs> Two on hey. two versus the raw room. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's over. It's, over. It's, it's three guys in the raw room. Though. Yeah, I mean Bar yeah, Bates. But he's kind of he's got that Dawkins build. Yeah, but he he, 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 he got them he got them limbs. I you know, I'd, I'd have to put the bully on him where I put it, grab his forehead and he yeah. try to be swinging. I'd have to do that to him. <laughs> yeah, DB he'll he'll we'll have to we'd have to end DB like he'll be he'll fight to the death. That, and that's what you gotta love you know about DB. Yeah, that's, that's what you gotta love about him. Unfortunately, if we're in that situation, that's what we'll have to do. Yeah, I don't. That's think, what we'll have to do to DB. I don't think DB is gonna fight fair either. Like you know, I'm thinking. He's, yeah, but is there really any fair fighting and fighting? You passed you one in the middle of proper wild. Not at all. Pass you what? Proper wild. I don't, yeah, I think if you're in a, a street fight, like, there is no fighting fair. Nah, not at all. There's no code of, like, oh, like, you know, like, nah, bro. Like, if you're on the ground, like. You got to just, you got to out crazy the next person. What? I'm trying to get weird in a fight. <laughs> yeah. How weird, like. I'm try, I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm getting, I'm getting Kevin Gates weird. <laughs> Are you going to end the fight all together, like. Yeah. Go pull his pants down. It's like, is there? there what, what's, that what's that bit? What's that bit? He's like, you want to fucking? And he pulls his pants. Down. You want to fucking? Because like, whoa, whoa, yo, yo, yo. That's me, dude. <laughs> so I'm getting a fight. Thirty-one years old. Hey, take it easy, man. Shake put your knees, put pants back on. Yeah, oh, put your bro, pants like, back call on. Call the truth, bro. Call the truth. Who's the? Who's that? Charlie Day. He's like, yo, I'll beat your dick off. I'll beat your dick off with both hands. Guys, like, yo, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Yeah, I wouldn't dick even want to fight a guy like that, honestly. I, yeah. I, I'm probably just like, bro, let's go ahead and squash the beef. Like, it's not even that. Yeah, we're good. Like, we're good. Yeah, we don't gotta do that. When's the last time you've been in a fight? Bro, can't even remember. Oh, it's like, been I, that long. Yeah, it has. Probably any situations? Like that. Nothing at MTSU? Nah, bro. Like, I've gotten in situations, but I never really got into a real fist fight, like, as an adult. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I'm just a cool dude. Like, guys don't really try me like that. I don't know. Like, and I'm, I think I'm respectful of most people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can think of, like, times in college, like, on some football stuff where, like, I remember being a young player, like, I think we was doing, like, some drill in football. And coach make us do up-downs. So, like, I'm pissed off. Like, yeah. Bro, you're not running to the fucking ball. Like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah, yeah. One of the older veterans, like, try to charge me. Yeah. Like, this guy's, like, 290. I'm 200, 210 pounds. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, I'm not finna fight this dude. Like, I'm not yeah. dumb. You know what I mean? Like, in that way. He's got right, my shoulder yeah. pads on, helmet on. Like, I ain't got my helmet on. Like, not finna fight this guy, but. Yeah, you're not a chirper. Like, you you don't, yeah. you're passive in a, in a positive way. Like, you're sure. not, people are chirping. You're like, hey, man, you do whatever you're doing. And exactly. then you grab your little speaker and you go to the Colts up. And just chill. Yeah, that's what you do. When I was a younger player, though, like, my second year in the league, I remember I was talking crazy. Really? Yes. I do not remember you talking crazy ever. Bro. Like, I remember they had this clip of me and uh, Jarvis Landry getting into it. Like, 
I don't know, when I was a young player, I was just, you know, just fighting for everything. Everything. Fighting for your respect. And I'm just like, bro, I'm out here like, what you mean? MTSU, small school guy? Well, it's yeah. not a small school, but well, yeah, people look at it, small school. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, it's not, it's not Nebraska. No, it ain't but, Nebraska. You know I mean? it's but it's a small school. Yeah, for sure. I think we won more games in Nebraska, though. Oh, that's well, probably true. And it's yeah, tough. But, yeah, that's but true, what though. conference are you guys even playing in? I think. You know what I mean? I mean, they got to schedule big games to make money. They probably play at Alabama yeah, or something did. like that. You probably played Tennessee one time. Probably got whooped. We did. Yeah, but you played them. That was a red shirt. Actually, my senior, we played against Bama. It was uh, Derek's. Me and Derek's both last year. And I always talk shit to him. Like, there's the only game in your whole senior year you didn't have 100 rushing yards. But oh, he, had, he had like 98, though. And it took about a half time, so. <laughs> <laughs> Final one, too. Yeah, I was, you know I was about to be like, I mean, still 98 under 100. Hey, when you're at a time. small school like that, like, and you're playing Alabama, do they pop on like Appalachian State versus Michigan? Be like, these guys did it. It's, bro, it's, of course. But it's yeah. funny because, like, you kind of go into the game week. It's not like the coach is like, yeah, we're just going to lose the game. Like, they try to just, you know, build you up. But honestly, I go into the games like that. It's like, bro, this is for any player that's at a school like MTSU that's going against Bama. Like, this got to be the game you're in your mind. Like, oh, this is the league game. I'm going to the league off this game. Right. Yeah. That's like, the film they're going to look at. Hey, that's yeah, a good mindset. It, that's a good mindset. And it was. Honestly, every meeting that I had with teams, that that whole process was went straight to the Bama game. Yeah. So for any player that thinks that these games don't matter, like, that's the only game that really matters. Yeah. Like, if you're at an MTSU or any small school and you're playing, let's say, because I think we played Bama that year, we played Vandy, well, and I think another, another team. But I caught a pick in every single game, in both of those games. Really? And so every meeting I had with an NFL team, Alabama game, Bandy game, didn't watch any of the other little conference games or none of that. So, Nothing. you know, they mean a lot, bro. Isn't it funny when you're in college and you could tell when the coaches think you're going to win or lose? If, they, if, they, if you're playing a team you know is better than you, the coaches are very positive. Hey, we got to yeah. stick together. But if you're playing a team that they know you can beat, they're way harder on you that week. Way harder. They on try me. to crush you. Yeah. You never way had harder. that, huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They were like that at, at Nebraska. Oh, you guys, yeah, you guys were good when you were at Nebraska. Yeah, I mean, we were solid. Yeah, we were terrible when I was at At least nine year. games every year. We were off. We probably would have lost. Nah. It's MTSU. funny you because those games, like, no. did you we guys had, have losing seasons? We had one good year. Um, Yeah, we had a winning season, I think, every year, but we were never, like, Michigan. We were, those like, we were a middle-tier Big Ten team. you're talking about, like, say we play, like, South Dakota or yeah. something like that, like, we would always... Kind of fuck it up. Yeah. It would be like, it would be like <laughs> be close. close. And then, you know, they'd have even more reason. Front runners, huh? Dude, that's the yeah. fucking, yeah. That's the worst when you think like, yo, I might legit like get the fourth quarter off in this game. If we, 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 if we, we always, do what we're supposed to do. Yeah, we were always good for a loss. And we didn't lose to like a team like that. But we were always good for a loss that we shouldn't have lost that year. Like, you Hines. know, we, we were nice one year and lost to like drop on, on Northwestern. I will argue this, though. And the difference between the big schools, SEC, ACC, all those schools and and obviously, like, you know, Conference USA Sun Belt. The biggest difference is the trenches. Because yeah. I feel like skilled players is not really that big of a difference. Mm. That's how I feel personally. Obviously, you're going to have the one five star. Bit. Not that big of a difference. The I, bigger difference is the game is always right, going right. to be one loss in the trenches. Yeah. You're going to get blown out in the trenches. But as far as the skilled players, because you have a lot of guys that are very talented on the outside, but mm -hmm. they don't get that big offer because maybe their grades sucked or, yeah. got in you know, trouble they just or got something overlooked happened. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But you're not about to just make up a uh, Taylor Lewan like at, at MTSU. Like we don't get those type of athletes. You'll, yeah, you you'll get up. But I'm saying for me, I was a I was a skill player. I mean, DBs, receivers. You can get a transfer guy to come in that's really talented and may have other big time offers. But something happened. He had to go to a smaller school. Mm. But it's usually not the same case when you look at defense alignment, offense alignment. Like you do notice a big difference. We were at the bar stool. Uh... Bowl game in Tucson, Arizona, and Wyoming was playing Miami of Ohio. Was it Miami of Ohio? Yeah. And I was watching the offensive line warm up, and you can there's a there's a big difference. There's a yeah, huge there's a big difference. Right, oh man, these guys are small. Like, so there's some dudes that are like really fucking big, but like kind of out of shape, and there's right. like guys that are way smaller, and there's like there's just a big difference. Mm -hmm. There is a big difference in their when size. When you say Titans, I mean we were talking like in the NFL, anybody can fucking anybody any can catch hands. Sure, any anybody. given Sunday for real. Yeah, but good. even the games like. As we started to get better as, at, the, at the Titans, we, there were games, Jets. Like, there were times you play the Jets, you're like, we should win this game by 10 or more points. Exactly. You should, and you end up losing. Jacksonville, I don't know why Jacksonville's never really been a problem until this year. Yeah, right. But It is weird, bro, because I feel yeah. like it's always a game or two, at least one game a year since I've been with the Titans, where it's like a game, you going into it, you know, you kind of look at the schedule. At least going into that week, it's like, 
this game we should win. Yeah, like, we should absolutely win this game. Win. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's funny because the games that we're usually favored to win, we don't do too well. Or we may make it close or we may lose the game. But yeah. the games we aren't favored in at all, we go out here and just dominate people. Destroy. Scrap, which is weird. Dude. And the thing that sucks is as you get older, you start to realize that pattern. Like, oh, we're playing this team week five. Week five comes up and you're like, boys, we've got to focus because this exactly. is always the one we drop. Correct. And for some reason, we still fucking drop it. <laughs> no, but you're exactly. aware. I'm aware. You're no, aware. We're but we're still like, aware. dude. We got to get this one. It's like those trap games. Yes, like, but they're like, but for what? There's no trap games in the NFL unless you're like right towards the playoffs. True. But like, it, it's exa it exactly is a trap game. But like, there's no reason to have a trap game week five. Because I almost you know? felt like, mm -hmm. remember we, um, when we lost to the Jets a couple years ago, it was 2021. We lost yeah. to the Jets. And, Shit. you know, they had a rookie quarterback. And like, looking at the rosters, we thinking like, bro, we should win this game. Like, right. We looking at our roster, looking at our team. Like, it's like how you can walk to the stadium and like, that was 2021. Game. Like, and then we go out there, I think, no offense to you guys, you guys gave like nine sacks or something like that. It, it was, was a, like, it was a bloodbath out there. Bro, it was crazy. Luckily, my, defense, there, there, was, yeah. was a, there was a nine sack game, line right? was it the a, truth. And I yeah. didn't really know how good they were. I didn't like, know how good that dude was uh, playing on the uh, right tackle. Or something yes. Like, bro, uh, he guy. made, he, he got paid the next week, you know that, right? No, he did. I he remember got paid that. like $70 million yeah. next week. The next I week? I had no idea who the fuck this guy was, and he bro. had like three, four sacks on us. I was like, what is going on over there? And I put, you know, right, it was balling. Bro. It's tough. And I literally took the boy who was uh, the right tackle, and I was like, hey, "Man, I did that. It happened to me two weeks ago. It's all good. Hey, you're gonna, you're gonna live. Yeah. No, you give sure. up sacks like that. I don't know what it is for what, what a DB thing would be. Maybe like I don't know, get mossed or something. But giving up a sack, you can play a worse. great game. You give a one sack, you're like, bro, not hundred percent. Everybody sees it. I would definitely look at that as very similar as far as the DB versus the left tackle. You can have you play six snaps in the game, mm -hmm. give a one sack, you had a terrible game. Right. Same thing for a DB is like, where you can have 59 great snaps, but then you get snagged on for a touchdown. That's the only thing people remember. Yeah, you get beat for a big play. That's probably the worst. Bro, and the there's, hardest thing about being a DB, bro. There's yeah. nothing more helpless looking than after a DB, like, dude kind of catches one in the end zone, and the DB kind of just, like, turn around and the walk worst away. Thing you don't really know what to do, because, you know, like, the cameras are always running to you. Like, you don't really know how to react. Yeah. You don't really know what it's like, do I just walk off? Yeah. Oh, I hit him with one of these, like, oh, palms up. Down. Palms up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't really know what this is like. Yeah. I'm just going to take my L and just walk off. Just walk off. Yeah. Or, but, and then also, too, like, maybe that wasn't your guy. You had to go cover up late. And it looks like it was you. Yeah. And you know it looks like it was you, but for 100%. some reason, you wanted people to know, like, yo, that wasn't me. But see, that's the You got to, like, like make it similar, similar, like, he explained his tight cover three, and it looks like man to man at 10 yards on AJ Brown first. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that's, that's like, the insurance yeah. policy. Be like, yeah. Where's the backer coming out right. here? Hey, bro, you got to be there. Where's my weak side backers? The backers, man? Y'all need to learn how to do a hook drop and cover three at times. No, the back went out to the left. You got to expand. So I'm just playing. But no, I'm just, <laughs> no, it is one of those things where you got to make a split decision where it's like, do I go sell my guy? Especially if it's a touchdown. Like, because you'll see some DBs, a guy gets scored on, you immediately turn around like, bro, where was you at? Like, because to kind of let the TV and people at home know, like, bro, it wasn't my fault. Like, this right. guy's supposed to be here. I know I'm over here, right. but this wasn't me. Listen, just as I'm here doesn't mean I'm guilty. Yeah, exactly. yeah you don't want fucking those that. type of things. So yeah. it's like, you know, as being a leader, you kind of just got to like, let's get to the sideline. It doesn't really matter. But in the back of your mind, you're thinking like, when you when you go home and you watch the film, like, damn, everybody think PFF. They think it was me. It was me. It does sit in your mind for sure. But you know yeah. when y'all drew it up. It's even worse when it's your when there. it's your fault. You're like, fuck, man, that's on me. I got to be, I, I got to figure out a way to make sure I that agree. doesn't happen. But when it looks like it was you, to me, that hurts more. Because you're like, dog, like, how do I navigate this where people, I can let people know it wasn't me without selling somebody no, out. Like, sure. it's a weird, I'd say a Bro, much I'll weirder feeling. Your teammates say it in some fashion, whether it's, you know, within the confinements of a meeting, publicly, yeah. whatever. All right. They're like, hey, man, come on. We're gonna talk about this, right? <laughs> bro, it's yes. funny, bro. My Don't wife. Coach, you say it was bro, your fault. I need to hear you we apologize. Gonna, wait, if I would get on the sideline after something bad happened, like a guy made an inside move, the guard was supposed to be there, something like that, I'll sit on the sideline. Sometimes, like it'd be like Quentin's baby, but hey, man, my bad. I'd be thinking like, say shit louder, say that fucking louder, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, bro, my wife. Man, I would get so mad sometimes. Be at the house, my wife is like, bro, you need to start running to the ball so much, like, because you know, at the end of the day, when you're the last guy in the screen, it's like, I think it's you, it's like, yes. Oh, you supposed to get the guy down, or it's supposed to be you yeah. right there. So it's like, stop running to the ball so much. It's like she don't, you know, I don't really get it. You know what I'm saying? In right. that way, but it was just funny, man. Like honestly, uh, yeah, I would say left tackle and, and safety is very similar in a way where it's like, bro, you can when you mess up, everybody sees. Out. Yeah, bro, yeah. Like, you can have a great game corner, and, like any DB corners any like that DB, too. Yeah, bro, like it's just tough, man. Guard and center are. It's kind of nice because when sacks happen in the middle, like you can't really 
it's you can know as an offensive lineman, okay, they, they said I was supposed to get that one. But for everybody else at home, bro. it's like, oh, he, he bumped into a lot it's of guys like there. Bro. Exactly. What are you talking about? What are you it's saying? It's like linebackers. Like you guys get you guys get covered up. It's you guys get covered up a lot. Linebackers, defensive tackles, they all see when you make the big hit. Yeah. Or you destroy a guard and you get in the backfield, whatever. Right. But like, they don't see when like, oh, you was literally supposed to be in this gap, but you just went rogue. Right. And just went another way. You're supposed to panic drop. And now this guy's screaming on the safety, and now I gotta, uh, I get juked, and the only thing that goes viral is. Damn, he just broke this guy off. Yeah, and if you I mean, see a linebacker in the back kind of jogging after yeah, the guy. But, yeah, but, but also, backers, if any run is broken, like, at the line of scrimmage, it's always going to be blamed on the backer and maybe not a defensive lineman who didn't stay in their gap. Or no, they got that's the not other true. Gap. That's, that's, yeah, sorry, yeah, the defensive lineman part. Is usually, hey, you got to... Yeah, you're going to be in the film room. Hang on now, hang on. We're, we're talking We're talking public attention. We're talking the people at home sitting and watching. It's okay. going to like that. If we're talking about being in the meeting room, then everybody gets got in the meeting room. But I'm saying publicly, when you're watching the game, if a back breaks one up the middle, it's usually going to be blamed on the backer. But that's because you know football. That's the that's the the view, the lens you're seeing it from. But all from a regular, regular fans, from a regular yeah, you're talking fan, about regular fans. From a regular fan perspective is watching the game. What is the safety doing? What right. is the, get him on. Get the no, guy. Bro, they only care about getting stop, the guy. Stop, 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 stop. How many times? Get him on the ground. They see a DB just fall, laying out. Here's why we all. Fall. Here's why we all sound like this. It's because we've only searched our own names in the search bar. So we all know <laughs> how we get destroyed so, out there. That is so true. Because I'm like, yo, what are you talking about? But no. I've never, you know what I mean? That's like, funny. Let's you're talk only, about that. You're only Dude. searching, quote, Will Compton, quote. Dude, and then you put it in. How many times? Latest after a game, like when you know you got dummy, bro. How many right, times in your life? like, man, hopefully this didn't, you know, hopefully nobody's really How many times it. in your life have you played a good game? And you're excited to go to the Twitter search bar. Oh, come on now. And, you and, you, and you're like, hey, left tackle's getting destroyed. Oh, yo, we yes, got to cut that. You're like, yo, yes, I think good. Yes. I think anybody can attest to this. Obviously, leaving Nissan, there's traffic coming out the, the, uh, the gate. And you, yeah, the little you know, S line. Right, been another right? Yeah. Everybody's on Twitter by that point. You're in your car <laughs> driving, you got your phone out. If you know you had a big game, you're immediately boom, boom. In the locker room, even. But if you had a bad game, sometimes it's like, oh, I'm awake. I'm gonna wait it out. Maybe I'll wait till I get to the house because I know it's gonna be bad. I'm not Taylor. But Taylor, well, me? Might be in the locker room. The Arizona game. Oh, yeah, Arizona. I had to hurry up. I had to put some fires out. I saw the yeah, tweet. Like, literally, I'm, you I'm, good, you that, got ahead of it. I got ahead of that. that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You had to M&M yourself. You I, I ate mild myself. The situation that you explained, I'm literally in the parking lot and I see Taylor tweeted about the Arizona game. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, dude. <laughs> Bro, that was the most embarrassing game of my entire life. I'm, I'm, and the thing that's so crazy is, like, I've had bad games, but, like, going into the game, like, ah, you know, I don't feel, like, sometimes you're just not feeling it. Right, like, you're right. like, hey, we'll see what happens. You don't play well. Well, you're like, hey, how can I figure right, it out right. for next week? Going into that Arizona game, I was like, I'm fucking back. Like, I was, yeah, I legitimately in my head, like, it. we had the game plan. Game plan's like, Taylor, we're, first play of the game, we're running left. We're doing this. A boy had a good camp. I'm like, right. yo. I'm well, we, about we, to be back. We like, even on the phone. It's not going to do before. nothing to me. We were on the phone Bro. a few days before talking about, I was about, going like, to Bobo's house to get IV. Get the fight started. Like, yeah. Let's yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm, like, hyped. Like, I'm legit, like, there's been a lot of games where I'm, like, I get nervous before because, like, All right. I don't get to attack like you guys do. I have to, like, protect. So I'm, like, hey, I got to make yeah, sure I protect exactly. my guys. And so there's, like, anxiety with that. This game, I'm, like, I'm about to fucking go off. Like, this think, first play, I'm about to take Chandler Jones. I'm about to take him to the sideline. First play, do you remember the first play of the game? I don't. I'll tell you. We interrupt this episode to bring you, to bring you Netcoins, dude. Shout out Netcoins, no for shadows, dude. All right, boys, listen up. Crypto investing is made easy with Netcoins, and it's e it's so easy to get started with their mobile app. It's fast, safe, and transparent. For the rest of June, I'm facing Will to see whose home states gets the most new users, and that and will earn an additional ten dollar reward for users from those states. The winning boys states will be named on our July 5th episode. Rewards will come out July 7th. Sign up now. Get $25 in cash to trade on the app when you use promo code BUSSIN. That's B-U-S-S-I-N. Download the Netcoins app or learn more at netcoins.com. We need this, boys. We fucking need this. Back to the episode. TFL. I run out. I fucking, my landmark's good. He goes, yep. Shoestring tackle on Derrick Henry. I'm like, oh, no. First play of the game. And I'm fucking. And then the second series, sack, hit. I'm like, 
It was a rough What's game that? for all of us. We got destroyed that game. We got destroyed, which is which is like what Vrabel's narrative was to me the next day. He called me in his office and said, I want you to know we didn't lose that game because of you. Yeah, we and got I'm thinking to myself, it was close though, because you had to call me in his office. I got put in the spin cycle by DeAndre Hopkins. I remember Bro. the red zone. And Jeff Simmons got his we, ankle we getting, broken. He was getting driven. Because, like, people that didn't play Arizona during the, uh, I forget the head coach's name. He had, Cliff like, Kingsbury. a real, yeah, Kingsbury. King, said? Kingsbury. Kingsbury. Cliff Kingsbury, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you said? Cliff Kingsbury, yeah. I respect him. I don't remember his name. or something like that right now. Name, but my bad. But this guy had a real college tempo offense. And so we're practicing that week, like, bro, it's going to be fast. Like, they don't huddle. They don't do anything. When you get out there in the game, it's the first game of the season. It's hot as shit outside. And, bro, they are moving. So we're getting driven all the way down the field. Get, like, to the high red zone. Coach, fuck it, I don't know. Blitz zero. And I'm lined up out there. It's like, oh, shit, DeAndre Hopkins at number two. I already know what's about to happen. As Soon as he snapped the ball, this guy just, because he was blitzing, so they already knew what was going to happen. Guy immediately just put his hands up. He just got like a little noun pass. Caught the ball. So I'm driving, trying to go inside, inside out. Guy immediately stuck his foot in the ground, spit out, and literally got in the end zone. He was, like, on the 15, 20-yard line or something. And, bro, I was like, this is bad, bro. I just gave him a touchdown. PFF, you know what I'm saying? Gave him a PFF. touchdown. You know, hey, that's the first thing. But I was pissed, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, the way that game went, bro, the game was terrible. Kyler was making some insane plays insane. on his feet. Like, he got so much time back there at times. Like he did a, some yeah, shit to like Jeff Simmons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember what he did to Jeff? Yes. He was on the sideline, on the Arizona sideline, kind of gave him one of those, and Jeff kind of looked like he got shot. <laughs> no, for real. And you kind of, like, like, crafty. Kyler was like a crafty, crafty, bug, crafty bro. Yeah. bro. Like, seeing that guy in, like, an open field. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, he's like a little roll runner. Like, his feet is moving so fast. And so, if you're coming down as a safety, like, usually you want to be aggressive. I'm going to take his legs out. But that's one of those things, like, you're like, hold on, let me let me chop my feet a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I really get broke off. Man, if he, you're watching highlights of him just breaking guys off, just, because, you know, like, he never lost the game in high school. Yeah. And, like, he just, like, He's always been this guy, and he's been doing that. He's always all been a winner. Yeah, so it's like, okay, I'm just going to force him outside. I'm just going to force him out of bounds. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like Lamar Jackson type. Just the, force him out of bounds. Force him out of bounds. In the game of football, what's, like, the most embarrassed you think you've ever been? Like, is there one game or one situation you're like, that is the most the wolf moment? Oh, man. Because I, I got a couple of them. Because uh, obviously, you're playing the game long enough, you're going to get embarrassed. Okay, no question. I remember the playoff, Lamar Jackson broke me off. I was, like, in the 20. In 2019? That was 2020, when we lost oh, in the first yeah. round. God, that was so disappointing that we lost, uh, He broke up the middle, broke contain, and, like, he was full speed already. And I was like, okay, let me try to break down. And he just gone. It was literally nothing I can do at that point. Uh, I mean, I've broken. I mean, I've missed a couple of tackles where a guy went, like, 90-some yards. Oh, man. I feel like when I leave here, I'm going to remember, like, an even more embarrassing moment yeah. for sure. But, uh, yeah, man. You know, really, really anytime I got scored on, I was just embarrassing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what's so funny is like being on offense. When we see teams get scored on, like right. you guys get scored on, like I would never think, oh, KB fucked up there. I think, oh fuck, they scored. We got to go do something. Really? Yeah, because we talk about all the time, like being able to zoom out from like you what saying. you do on a day to day basis. Right, right. Because right. you think you get mossed or something happens, like you get broke off by Lamar. You probably think the whole world just saw me get fucked up by Lamar Jackson. Well, I know they did because. Twitter search bar. Everybody was, everybody was killing me like, damn. What is KB what doing? Are you doing? Like, make so, this You're bro. right there. But it's like, it's if you just be able to zoom out a little bit, like then you could do it. Like when I talk about Arizona, like I, hey, your boy got toasted, but then yeah, you bring right. up like, hey, DeAndre Hopkins did it to me. Then Simmons thing. This hey, you don't realize everyone had shit in that game. Oh, bro. And it's like, oh my god, I can't you, believe that the happened. You play this game, you realize like, bro, it's gonna happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have a bad game. You're gonna have a bad play. It's yeah. Just like. How do you respond? You eventually just get got. You're Everyone get gets got. The longer you play, you're going to get got. This is what it is, what it is. Damn. You know, just Question on, uh, you were talking about DeAndre Hopkins scoring on you. Yeah, you yeah. Know, DeAndre Hopkins is a Titan? I don't know, man. Like, I just look at from his perspective. He probably is not going to sign until later on this summer. He's probably going to take his visits, get quartered around a little bit. I mean, probably didn't even want to do OTAs or minicamp anyway. So it's like, bro, I might as well probably just sign, uh, right before training camp. But I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know what all teams is looking at him. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's us and the Patriots right now. So, obviously, he'd be a great addition. He would, yeah. would love to have him yeah. on the team. Massive, yeah. man. I think he's got, like, but five I, it's X-Gloves. funny because, like, you have this You're culture, the... like, on social media where, like, guys are just, like, recruiting guys all over, you know what I'm saying, the league. Like, yeah. I've never been that type of dude because I always, I feel like I would feel a way that if, let's say, for example, it's a really good cornerback that's out there, free agent. I'm like, bro, come join the team, bro. Like, let's, let's team up. 
But then I got like other guys in the team like, damn, bro, you say I suck? You, you, you think I right, suck? Right, yeah, you yeah, like, yeah. You think I'm not good enough? Like, I never wanted to be in that type of way where it's just like, I'm trying to recruit all these different players from other teams, like, with the eyes and all that on social media. It's like, I don't know. It's just, if guys want to come join, if you call me, you reach out to me. Like, actually, Arden Key, who signed on our team, he reached out to me uh, before he signed this deal here. Yeah. Like, what was the culture in Tennessee? Like, thinking about coming to Tennessee, I had a couple mm -hmm. other teams, and I kind of spit around, like, bro, you should come. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, but, like, I just never really been that guy just trying to recruit a bunch of players around the league. But, obviously, we all know who DeAndre Hopkins is. Like, Bro, he really dog, is. Bro. Yeah, he's a dog. Oh, man. Listen. Anytime we played Houston. We played Arizona last training camp, or practice against them last training camp. And we were doing, like, a red zone period. And this guy is probably, like, the five-yard line. This guy runs a fade on Christian Fulton. I don't know. I think it went viral. I don't know if it did or not. But, and Christian Fulton's a really good corner. You, you guys play Madden, and then, like, you go off the spectacular catch thing. You push triangle, and they just go to some little animation. Literally did this in real life. Bro, this man literally just put his hands up. When I say he just literally, like, almost bicycle kicked in the air. Right hand, like, the ball's in here. Right hand. Ugh. And just, like, walked And brought off. it back? Bro, it was the most amazing shit I've ever seen. Like, this is no BS. Like, literally, like, a, a regular release. It wasn't nothing crazy. Regular release. <sighs> and just walk, like, as if Christian wasn't even there. Like, put his left hand right here. <sighs> Blocked him out. And just walked off. God damn. You know, you're in the middle of practice. It's like, you're, I'm running to the ball and I see it. God oh, damn. <laughs> God, like. Like, you just gotta respect. Like, give a nod right, after it that. Was, it was incredible. You just gotta you tell Christian, like, hey, you're all good. Hey, He's a freak. He did. That was yeah. Bro, that it was like that one. one uh... It was one of them. Like you just like I mistakenly was like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your own teammates. And Christian probably heard it. Oh, damn. Dude, like, he was, was always really doing tough. crazy shit to us when he was at Houston. No, he was always sure. doing wild shit, and he would just probably had his best games against us. Probably. Yeah. He was a beast, man. He's yeah. always been a beast. Anytime, like anytime Fuller here. was in too. I feel, thankfully, Fuller was oh, hurt yeah, a lot. Sure, he was. But if Fuller and Hopkins were both playing. It's like we would knew as an offense. Me and Ben was there, be like, hey, Bro. we gotta score forty. I think it was either my rookie or second year. I remember he did like uh, we had a, a slot corner, Bryce McCain, and this guy did like a walk off release, like literally took like three steps off the line, and just like broke in the thing, like just broke him off, like. So this guy's the truth, dog. Now he's he's the truth. Obviously. He holds the ball out like this and will be like spinning. But they said his hands like he's got massive nuts. fucking hands. Said, bro. I don't know what size. X. Like, bro, it's crazy. Dog. Five X is the rumor. I mean, he he probably has the best hands in the league for sure. I won't say probably. I think he has the best hands in the league. What was Colt sure. McCoy saying to you? Colt McCoy when he was in Arizona. He's a dog. He was saying he'd come up to him on the side like, "Hey, throw me the ball, man. What are you doing? Like, just throw me the ball." And he said like, uh, "D Hop would sometimes just run his own route." Within kind of the, maybe the confines of what the play is, but he would just run his own route, not even the right route, but just run his own route. He's like, man, just just throw me the ball, like throw it to where I'm I'm trying to go. Now, I know for a fact he does because I remember we was playing them 2018. I never forget this. It was me and Adore. We're like obviously going to the game plan. We're going to double team him when he's lined up like by himself outside. Mm -hmm. And I was he kept running this little dig route, and I have seen it on field. He's like kept running his dig route. I told Adore because he was pressed. I said, listen, if you run this dig. I'm breaking on it. Just protect me high. And literally, as soon as I felt him about to run dick, I broke. And this guy literally did one of these and took off deep and <laughs> threw his hands up. And obviously threw the ball up and he didn't catch it. No, I bet did he? I don't think he did. But I remember like I was like, it was like one of those, oh shit. I broke down and I turned around, just like literally just threw my hands up in the air, hoping he didn't catch the ball. Yeah. But that's why I knew it was like, okay, he's literally doing his own thing out here for real. Yeah. You but didn't see this on film at you all. You just brought up something. That is, and we all see with DBs. You right. threw your hands up hoping he didn't catch the ball. <laughs> okay. After he did not catch that ball, what'd you do? What do you mean? You, you're so play. fucking nice. What so do you lame. mean? He had you. He had you. Wait, he, he dropped it on his own accord, and you hit him with the... No, so you have to understand, my body presence... Locked him up. My body presence in itself disrupted the play. See, that's the thing you got to understand. My body presence. Yes, because at the end of the day, a quarterback, if you put your body within hand or whatever it may be, yeah. it has to be a perfect throw. There's a difference if the receiver just dropped the ball and the DB is but just celebrating. That that's different. That happens all the time, though. That's but, a very common thing with DBs. There'll be three, four yards in front of them. That DB is nothing, and they, he gets overthrown. It's hard to be a DB, bro. Like you got to. It's hard to be a gotta, tackle. You got to celebrate this, this, you know, the slight wins. Take all like, the ones you can get. Bro, you take it everything you can get, bro. It's, 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 Everyone's it's like trying to take life, advantage bro. of their moments. 
What's your, so your thought is do the... Oh, incomplete pass. Of like, course. Oh, whether the quarterback just misses in your, in your beat or anything like that. Like, oh, quarterback's scared to even put it around me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's real, bro. It's hard. It's hard to be a DB. It's hard yeah, out here, bro. I would think that is so funny watching. Because I obviously never covered nobody. And I was like, yo, you guys got burnt. What are you doing? Random dudes just doing that. Hey, man. I thought that was hilarious. Covering is hard, bro. Nah, it is. Honestly. I, I think Covering it's, it's, is fucking hard. Yeah. I would argue it's the hardest thing in football. Besides playing left tackle, I would say, yeah. I don't know, bro. Being a being well, a cornerback is the hardest position physically it, it, it in is, the NFL. For sure. What's the second hardest? Quarterback. I was about to say, playing quarterback. What's the third hardest? If we're, if we're, talking, if we're talking everything. What's the third hardest? If we're talking everything all around, like outside of physical and everything, I like had mental, then I would say quarterback. Yeah, for sure. But stri strictly like physical, like. You got to think, like. You're living in a backpedal and reacting to a receiver. Because I think even even in the sport of football, tackles you are living in a backpedal and reacting to a two hundred ninety. You're not. You're, you're not. not you're, 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 I get it. You played punt, brother. You guys see that a punt no, set. I've been some shit. kick slides now. It ain't yeah, that like, hard. <laughs> Yo, I had to post and protect my inside because you're protected by the guard. Hey, what is off? Who's who's off? Put up in the punt, showing about putting the arm up. Me, the, dra the drag hand, the drag hand. <laughs> it's funny because he sends me some stuff every now and then. But anyway, like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying you got to go backwards. Like, like, the dude, yeah. dude, dude weighs as much as me. I get it. I'm not saying it's not hard. It's yeah, hard. No one's saying it's not hard, but bro. It'd be a lot of times, like you said, where the same thing you say a DB will, you know, mess up or, you know, the guy drop the ball or quarterback overthrow the ball. It's the same thing with, with tackles. Like, quarterback scrambles out, throws the ball away. No sack. Tackles get beat all the time. Yeah. yeah. You know Guys get beat all the time. In corner, you don't corner. see me fucking, yeah. You don't see me well, doing nothing. No personality, yeah. though. Yeah. Like, DB, it's a no, different personality. My personality is much different than other offensive No line is going to sell yeah. where like, oh, I blocked this motherfucker. And you would look ridiculous. I got him. <laughs> and that's something like, you don't even like. And corners are on it. your left tackle to, and I ain't say you wouldn't want him like that. But like, if you, let's say, for example, you beat a, a, a pass rusher, yeah. you know, you want to tease the guy. Because then you know, as soon as he lines up next time, he might eat you for lunch. No, there's a there's a, a double edged sword with that for sure. You're playing. I've been on both sides of that. I've been on both sides of that. That I've seen that really is like like Trent Williams, for example. Yeah. That's a guy that's like you just don't mess with. Like this guy's gonna talk yeah. shit. Yeah. And it's like it's gonna be nothing that you can literally do. I never forget we played the 49ers in 2021, and him and Jeff is getting two on the first drive. You know Jeff talks his shit. Yeah. yeah. They get into on the first drive because usually I'm like I'm like Jeff's bodyguard. Like, hey, bro, come on, chill. Like, we're gonna get a you gonna get a penalty. Come on, like. Cussing out, you know, you're saying all type of crazy stuff. Like, yeah. bro, you're a little, you're a little too over this now. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, you got to respect the league. It's time to grow up, a little yeah. bit. But him and Trent Williams getting back to him. And Trent Williams saying shit. I'm like, bro, you got that shit. Like, <laughs> you got it. I'm not, y'all, whatever y'all got going on. That's between y'all. I'm not getting between that, bro. Yeah, Trent really like is. Trent Williams, that's on you, dog. Like, hey, penalty, it don't matter. Like, I'm not getting between that. Trent really is him. Nah, he is, for sure. He might be the best player in the NFL. Arguably. He's up there. For sure. I mean, he yeah. just. I mean, uh, how old is he now? Like 35 or something like that? I think, he, is he as old as you or is he older than you? He's older than me. Oh, is he like 13? He's a, he's a, he's a unicorn. He was the class with uh, Sue, Sam Bradford. But the guy's like crazy athletic. Man. Crazy athletic. 34, 34, that's it. That's what I'm saying, bro. He's the truth. Dude, Will tells a story about him and Rack and they were sitting at like the lunch table and Trent was legit like, I'm just trying to find out when it's going to get hard for me. Like, in front of Brian Arakpo's face. And that's just crazy. But it was more of a conversation of just, like, it wasn't... Keeping it real. Yeah, like, it wasn't, yeah. like, a shot at Rack or anything like right. that. Because I want to say, like, Logan Paulson, he was a tight end. Him and I were talking about something, bitching about something. Our body's feeling the type of way. And I remember Trent sitting there and being like, man, I'm just wondering if there'll be any, anybody that ever walks through that door that challenges me in practice. <laughs> now, I'll, now that, Is that fucking nuts? That, that's it, different, bro. Yeah. I would have been like, what you mean? Like, what do you mean, bro? Like, or I either said that I think, or like... I think Rack just laughed. I mean, they got, <laughs> they, got the, they they had one-on-ones, like... But that has to make you feel a certain type of way, though. Yeah, I but... I love Rack. Rack's my guy. But that has to be like... You shrink down a little bit within size, like, damn. Like, well, hang on. I feel like I'm him. If, bro, if, bro, Nick, if, but, if, but, if like, I'm thinking about it... Rack, because Rack was there with Logan and I, and we were talking about it and talking about, like, just bodies being banged up after practice type yeah. of situation. And um, then Trent said that I believe in a way of he doesn't ever really get sore or tired. But yeah, I mean, ultimately it was 
I'm wondering if somebody will ever walk to that. I mean, it, it was it was a, put me it, in a situation where I'm like, you know, banged up after practice. But imagine being so good that <clears throat> once you say it, the guy that would be most offended just laughs because he just knows it's kind of true. Yeah. And Rack's a, Rack's a baller. Nah, Rack was sure. a baller. I mean, yeah, he had yeah. what, four Pro Bowls. Like, I know yeah. about like he was when on you that commercial. About... What commercial? Cupcakes? Geico. The Geico commercial. Rack was in the Geico Yo, commercial. Like when Rack was all pro in Washington, he was like a stud when he came out. He was like, yeah, uh, he was. But I you think he was like, all, I want to say he was like all pro, either in his first couple of years. But yeah, he was on yeah, one of those Geico commercials. Sure. That's hilarious. Man, you need a Geico commercial. I mean, it's even funnier. It's even a cupcake commercial. Nah, him, sure. him and Griff. Him and Griff. Like that that shit is such a funny bit to me. And they, they, they had a show over it, right? The cupcakes. Yeah, they got. Yeah, they, they got, got the, like their they own got branded the, the cupcake guys or something like yeah. that. That's so funny. But that just lets you know about like how, depending on what market you are in, Trent Williams has been that guy. He's been that dog. But then he's with the 49ers in a different market with a different fan base. Now he's arguably the best player in the NFL. Yeah. But he's probably been the same person he's been in Washington that he is now. But it's just the eyes that's on him now. He it was, just makes mm. the, the biggest difference. He was so good. At, I at think the he, get, he, he legit still turned promos. it up. I mean, he took a people he forget. Rack. <laughs> he was in a couple of these things. Is wearing, wearing a shirt that says a rack bow? I think I remember this too. How yeah. old is this? Rack was the man. This is probably back in 2013, maybe 2012. Yeah. yeah. Rack my lo- freshman year in Rack college. looks like a fucking outside linebacker. Yeah. Like if you're painting a like you see the uh, Under Armour. Th- Statues oh, yeah, when sure. you walk into Dicks, if you're like, hey, make me one of those that look like a like a outside yeah, linebacker, yeah. Rack is that man. Rack for sure. He yeah. was just built like that, dude. Look at that video. What ever happened to good commercials like? The caveman like, commercials the caveman were fire. Were classic. Those were always like, so good. Like the Super Bowl commercials aren't as good as they used to be. What do you think? I uh, know. They're creative, but they're not as good. Like, like Budweiser's old commercials. commercials really fell off. Super Bowl commercials. Yeah. I'm like, bro, what happened to great commercials? Hey, but what I was gonna say about Trent is people forget he took an entire year off. Yeah. And that never works out for anybody. What's up? That never works out for anybody. We talked about Le- oh, yeah, uh, Le'Veon yeah, Bell. Right. Mrs. Money, all that. Took an entire year off and came back, and he's still Trent Williams. Turned it up. Yeah. Like, got become a better version of Trent yeah, Williams. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... I don't. Like you said, that Le'Veon Bell deal, like... Because I seen something about Saquon was kind of putting it out there that that's a yeah. possible... That's how we got in the conversation too. the other day about it. Usually never works well. You know what I'm saying? Trent Williams right. is a unicorn. Like... Take that bread if you got to. Especially, but uh, different positions, too. Like, there's a lot more longevity with an offensive lineman than with a running back. Sure. Yeah. No, nah, that's 100%. Because running backs, it doesn't usually, and again, when we talk about, like, unicorns at the running back position, I, and there's many more out there, but just local, recent, all that stuff. Like, not yeah. everybody's a Derrick Henry either to where you nah. get better in the second contract. Type of. Yeah, I mean, Derrick is, I mean, it's funny because Derrick's been the guy that he is in the league that he's been, like, his whole life. Mm-hmm. He's always been a volume guy. Um but like I said, I mean, if you just watch the way Derek take care of his body, like you will see why he's able to last the way he's able to last. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that other guys don't take care of their body, right? Um, but it's the way he's built. And I've, I've had conversations with a lot of guys, like, and this is not a slight to him because obviously Derek is, I think he's a future Hall of Famer, in my opinion. Yeah. But in the way he plays the game, he's a dinosaur. And I say he's not saying he's a dinosaur; he's old. It's just like they don't make guys like him no more. Mm-hmm. Like a guy that's two forty five, six threes are. Probably bigger than all our pass versus on our team, but they just don't. You don't have guys that because you see nowadays everybody's like a running back by committee, running back by committee. Like he's been our offense for ever since he's been a full time starter, been the main engine of our offense. Like they don't really build guys like that no more. Like I don't think they will ever be. I mean that's just me personally. I don't think it will ever be another running back like Derrick Henry going forward in the league because I just think that even on the on a younger level like high school and youth sports like. Probably running backs are seeing what's going on with the market and everything. They're probably like, bro, I don't want to play running back. I like to touch the ball, but maybe I might need to go play DB or something like that. If a mm. guy's short or small, I might, might want to go play DB or might yeah. play receiver. Or play, might play something else that has the longevity. Or because, you know, what's going on with the running back market is real, man. Like, It's a, it's a scary a father, time. My, my child is playing sports. Is like, yeah, son, we're going to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're going to yeah. try, probably gonna try to start playing soccer. Yeah, do this in Pop Warner, but then you got you to move positions. Yeah, yeah. You got to move positions. But you, like, uh, just on the, the team side, you also understand because you can get guys, you can have a running back by committee and have it cheaper. Nah, I mean, that's the whole business side of football. Right. Like, I understand it now, being an older player, like, yeah, I mean, I get it. <laughs> just trust me, I get it. Like, if you can, you know, like, you know, 
And Vrabel was a realist. Like, you have conversation with Vrabel, keep it real. Like, you know, hey, you can have, it's like, for example, when even I remember when um, 2021, when Derek got hurt, Derek played, I think, 10 games, had 937 rushing yards, 10 touchdowns. I seen a stat. The second half of the year, when Derek wasn't playing, we still had 937 or 900 some rushing yards as a team mm -hmm. together. So if it you it took guys like two or three games yeah. to even get up to that volume, oh, and then sure. all of a sudden Jonathan you know, Taylor, was I'm, a, I'm just talking. Then about, all of a sudden Jonathan Taylor was an MVP candidate. No, exactly. But I'm just talking about from because I think who we had that we had Foreman. Me off. We had Foreman on the team. Foreman and Hilliard. Hilliard. Yeah. And Hilliard. Hilliard. But just looking at it from a team perspective, it's like damn, Derrick Henry was putting up these numbers, but then we had two guys that put up the same equal amount of numbers in the same amount of games. So it's like, but obviously they weren't making what Derrick's making. Right. Mm. So if you're looking at it from a business side of it, you know. I understand it, right. but obviously Derek is a different type of guy. I mean, obviously, because I think that obviously the stats, you you, you kind of put all that numbers in, but at the same time, you had to look at the person, the player, the celebrity, and who he is, and, you know, that's how you get his worth and what he's worth to this team and his mm -hmm. organization in the city. So, Man, the minute the minute Derek's no longer a Titan, that's going to be a big hit from a business standpoint for the for the marketing of this franchise. Sure. I mean... This 2021, a... I think it was even less than 10 games that he played, because I remember... It might have been was, like eight. He was, like yeah, was, he, he was at 937. Yeah, because it was... He was at 937, and it took five game. weeks he like for him to even get out of the top was, five. Everybody else was, like, at, like, 500. Yeah, so yeah. It, was crazy. it was nuts. And then you're right. Uh, he was for sure Jonathan Taylor was an MVP. Was like Bro, a, he was I'm like, yo, what the fuck? He was going to get 2,000 again, easy. He, I thought he was going to beat the record. He was on pace to destroy the record that year. Bro, if Derek would have got 2,000 yards in back-to-back years, he was a... Cancel Christmas. Put him in the Hall of Fame right now. Yes. I think they're. I think he's a Hall of Famer really right now. Did, I mean, I think so too. But I think that you, he literally didn't have to play another down of football. He's mm -hmm. automatically a Hall of Famer. Real talk. I mean, it's two hundred uh, yards back to back. Two thousand. I mean, two thousand. Yeah, bro. Nuts. That would have been insane, dog. Did you see how many games he played in in twenty twenty one? It had to be like eight. I think it might have been even. Less he was still than playing that. only sixteen games. Yeah, it was at the that Colts time. game when he broke his foot. Yeah, it was the Colts game. Still played too. Broke his foot, still played. What was crazy that year? Not a lot of people talk I didn't about even it. Know what was going on? Go ahead. Yeah, I just remember him. I I remember that. I remember the play, and he took his shoe off. I was like, "What's wrong?" He's like, "My foot, my foot." You know, Derek. I didn't foot. know because he was playing. I'm coming. Yeah, I thought he was I straight. He, he, he said, "Bro, messed up my foot." Like he played in uh, eight games that year. Eight games. And again, what I was trying to say that not a lot of people uh, talk about was uh, I had Derek Henry and Jonathan Taylor on my fantasy team. Still not a lot of people talk about. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you get with having both of them? People, uh, since Jonathan Taylor was coming off of his rookie year, I believe, he just wasn't somebody who was uh, picked up in the first round. Yeah, yeah, I never played fantasy football. I think it's fun to play with your best, position group. Man, it's fucking... Yeah, I still don't even really understand, like, how it works, honestly. Like, I'll yeah. try to get in a defensive player one so I can pick you, and then, like, yeah, I'll, so be the, thought, I'll be the one on the internet. Like, yeah, either yelling you, at you or... Crazy I thought here. you could only pick, like, an a entire defense... It, you that's what it is. Individual players? You can you can play like a, it's called like a IDP individual okay, yeah, defensive yeah. player, uh, to where you it based off like tackles, picks, sacks, stuff like oh, that. I got you. That makes sense. Yeah, I had no clue. Fantasy football's a good time now. I manage a couple teams. For real? Yeah. <laughs> you managed. How'd you fare? Yeah. How'd you fare? I won this last year. Did you really? I won, yes. Really? Yeah. Two years ago, Fantasy football league championship. Yeah. Two years ago, uh, I had the most points. Ended up losing in the championship. Which really pissed me off, but I yeah, got mine. Most this points, past but you year. still lost. How's that? Two work? years ago. Well, oh, okay. because you get into the playoffs, you get you get into uh, playoff oh, okay, season, and then you know it's do or die. It's win or go home. Oh, that makes sense. And we ended up losing. I had I had a couple guys go down late in the year, or they might not have played because they were going to play in the playoffs in real life. Uh, and so I took a lump and ended up losing the Super Bowl. But see, see, that's where I think that you know when you obviously being a football player, and then you have certain fans that certain people are like. Really fans of the game. They yeah. love the game. They love watching the game. They love coming out to the games. But then you have your fantasy football fans who, like, really only care about their fantasy team. And it kind of pisses you off. Like, oh, like, you, we just need him to get over 100 rushing yards or something like that. It's like, bro, it's not the way the game went. It's not it's the, the way game I, plan. It's the way our game works. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just like... <laughs> hey, I feel you. I think, like, I think, <laughs> I think, like... Uh... But it's like the whole thing with, like, the gambling stuff. Like, where I think it was something where some basketball player in college was like had got like crucified like they was talking crazy on social media because i think they were losing or something like that and mm -hmm. like the guy like pulled it for three and messed up like the spread or something like that it's that sunk, sunk the shot and people were pissed 
Yeah. Like, yeah, almost like, like threatening him, like, you yeah, messed up my spread. Like, you know, guys be having these 10-play par- yeah. right. parlays and stuff. Like, they messed up the parlay. Hey. Yes, I have. Live like, for, it will live for a parlay. I live for a good parlay, man. I live for a good bet, play. Get 50K? Yes. That's, how, that's probably how most of these, these engines make their money for guys like who bet in these yeah. little $5 parlay, win $10,000. Seven-leg parlays, yes, put them out bro. there. Bro, it's hilarious. Don't worry. Hey, you, you'll know when Will's deep into it when halfway through the season next year we'll be getting texts. Hey, so-and-so playing? Hey, what's the deal? What's the game plan with this? Trying to get <laughs> you a still lead? getting those texts? You did a call. Like some sort lead? of gambling's anonymous. Uh, I, you know, I put in effort. I'll send like voice text so that way it can't be, uh, can't, be uh, traced. can't be traced. They feel like they could trace I won't everything. say no names. Like a trace, but I, I try to do my I try to do my due diligence for the week. That's I mean, so I feel funny. it, man. Hey, you're on the other side of it. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. have to. I yeah, yeah, yeah. It. All right, boys. We interrupt this episode to bring you Twisted Tea. This is Twisted King Louis talking to you right now. Keep it twisted this summer with Twisted Tea, real brewed tea with a kick. That's five percent ABV with full of flavor and very refreshing. Twisted Tea turns up the heat on any occasion, making the perfect product for any summer occasion, daytime, nighttime, outdoors. And poolside goes down smooth. There's no carbonation, which makes it easier to drink all day long, dude. Twisted Tea feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. Keep it twisted. Grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today. Twisted King Louie out. Back to this episode. You try to play. Yeah, you try and play. I was trying to live in both worlds. It didn't work out. But it's always funny because uh, I'm more into the side of like the fantasy football and obviously bantering on social media and everything like that. So yeah. I, I always enjoy the memes and the stuff that comes from when the oh, spread sure. doesn't hit or something. Yeah. yeah, but then yeah. Listening to players still like feel, you still <laughs> see that they, that they feel a type of way. Like when they get, 100%. when they get chirped on the internet. Crazy. I think in what my head. You, is Taylor, how you doing, man? You lost a lot of weight, bro. You look good. Um, nah, I appreciate you. I'm yeah. good, dude. We've been, we've been traveling like crazy. I'm so sure. I've been like, how much weight have you lost though? The fans want to know. Yeah, I know, know. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't know if I want to tell the fans. Yeah. <laughs> you this, want to know. KB's this morning, you now. Yeah, this wow. morning, <laughs> yeah, this morning I woke up, I was 259 pounds. Mm. So I've lost 58 pounds, 59 pounds. Wow. Yeah, we're moving, dude. You know what's going on around, what's going around right now? What is? And like people are saying, like, bro, you can come back, play tight end. I did I not call really? you? I called Will like first phone call. Like yeah. One of your first phone calls after right surgery, after, right? Uh, or after I think it was right after I got cut. I was like, bro, what if I come back and play tight end? Bro, you could be like Mercedes Lewis, bro. That'd be sick. That could be something. It's worth thinking about. And I'm it's not off the table. No, for sure. Of hey. me playing no, off the line. Sure. But <laughs> it's a joke. Playing tight end would be sick. I think that would be fucking awesome. But because like Mercedes Lewis literally was in Green Bay, played like three years and literally was like just the extra offensive lineman. I and literally was an elite blocker. Like, I remember right. going up against him and, like, he put his hands on me and I couldn't, like... Strong. I'm like, bro, this might be the strongest guy I ever played. Hell yeah. Like, like a Luke Stocker? Yeah, Luke Stocks like that. Here's the issue with this. Excel personnel? I'll play your Y. You try to put me in an F, though, in the I formation. You can go fuck But see, stuff. that's what I'm saying. We're I'm not, not doing that. Do that. But what we might do is put you on a little elite play. Block, block, release. You're yeah. wide open. Nobody... I'm in. Why I'm you, all about that. Why you get in the backfield? Play the F? You yeah. got, like, Dante Hightower? You need to come downhill on an ISO play? Buddy, I'm good. <laughs> I'm all set. I've I've been the tough guy. I'm yeah, set yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me play the wild. Let me cross sift. Let me let me take some sure. legs out. Easy. Some unsuspecting rookie defensive doubles, linemen. You know, it's a little doubles. Little yeah. B block. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> little B block. A little triple. <laughs> little tray block. You yeah, want me to hit the hip it. of a guy and get up to a linebacker? I got you. Easy. But if you want me to run from me to JP to hit somebody face to face, I'm right. solid, dude. I'm gonna cut him. <laughs> no, I'm gonna cut him. I got a little neck thing anyway when I look back to the left. I got a little something. I can't be doing that shit. Yeah, what I'll do you think it. about the label of rebuilding for the Tennessee Titans? Oh. As somebody who's been, you know, obviously you've been with the boys now for seven years. We all understand the culture of, of, right, right. of Rabel and what goes on inside those walls. Like, on the outside, it seems like it's a full-on rebuilding year for the Tennessee Titans. As somebody who's played for a long time and... And, you know, yeah, man, I, back. How do you feel about that? I don't think it's a rebuild at all. Um, I just think that certain things had to happen as far as certain cuts that we had to make just this offseason. And, um, you know, it's funny, and I ain't trying to pivot off your talk but, or off your question, but looking at the whole John Robinson deal, and um, and I feel like it's not really talked about enough, but, like, obviously this guy who drafted me, and I defended him uh, like a mug because back in 2019, we went to the uh, AFC Championship game. Leaving that game, obviously that was a hell of a run. 
leaving that that game and leaving that offseason, I felt like he said, and I feel like most pe people pretty had the same sentiment as like, we have to get a consistent pass rush. Think about it, we had a really great pass rush. Think about the passes we had maybe in 2021 that we had then was able to, you know, Mahomes was out there running around doing all type of crazy stuff. That's Flex like, throwing this right before halftime. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's when we was like, okay, if we just had, because guys were hurt and Jeff Simmons was still coming to his own. We still had Jarrell, but we had interior guys, but we just didn't have the outside guys. So 2020, signed Big Beasley. Obviously, that was a miss. We signed Clowney. That was a miss. But I feel like he tried his best to try to... He probably seen in his mind, like, I had the green light to probably build the best team I could possibly could build because our window is now. I got to try to win now. And I feel like from there, 2020, obviously, he had some misses, but then he signed Bud, and he kept trying to bring in more pieces, traded for Julio. And um, I Damn. think that's why I restructured, because we got for Julio or whatever. But uh, got Julio in. Then 2021, you know, it happened the way it happened. We didn't win. And then you seen John in, in the combine, he's about to tear up because they asked him about whatever. Because that year, we would have won the Super Bowl. Like, I 100% believe we would have won the Super Bowl. We had destroyed the Chiefs at home. We'd had the Chiefs at home that year. And then we was going to have, obviously, play the Rams in the Super Bowl, which we destroyed the Rams on Sunday Night Football. That was, that, that was it. And, uh, but yeah, just going back. And then, obviously, you know, this year, John gets, you know, gets fired or whatever. Because I think that from the, all the, the free agent signings that he made, some worked out, some of them didn't. And then a couple of the draft class were the injuries and things like that. So eventually, you know, we, and this is, you know, he got fired at the Eagles game. Because honestly, being on the sideline at the Eagles game, it kind of felt like, man, all the injury, it kind of felt hopeless a little. Not hopeless, but it was like, we was literally on the sideline, like, all the injuries we had. And I'm looking at the Eagles. And I'm like, bro, they got some elite talent, bro. Mm -hmm. And it kind of felt like at, at a point, probably in the third quarter, it's like, bro, like, this is probably one of the only times I've probably played in a game in the NFL where I was like, this, like, I don't think we can really compete with this team right now. Like, like we're real talk, like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm just keeping it 100. I feel like, bro, we're getting outmatched right such now. Such a bad like, feeling. And it, I, don't, I don't even think it was like we was getting out coach. I mean, that's what any coach gonna say. We got our coach, we got our played, all that good stuff. But yeah. it was really like, damn, like, we're getting our ass whooped. You know what I'm saying? Like, it yeah. really felt like that. And then obviously, John got fired, but. Uh, I'll always defend him because I feel like he tried to do what he could to try to, you know, go win a Super Bowl right now. And so, like you said, we talk about a new GM coming in, and he's looking at the balance sheet. He's looking at, he's like, he had to make certain moves. But I also feel like he also, he obviously made other moves where he brought in some, some other offensive linemen. Uh, Shazier, linebacker, he signed for free. I think he's going to be a really good player for us. Uh, brought in Sean Murf Murphy Button as a corner. I think he's going to be a really good player for us, too. So I know from the outside, it looks like, oh, we let go of all these guys, and we didn't bring in some other big name players that, you know, obviously everybody wants to bring because that's that's what fans look at. They look at big name guys that we, yeah. we ain't signed nobody big. We not we didn't do anything to help out. Um, but we all know what Vrabel's about, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like Vrabel in his mindset, obviously, Vrabel was a guy that wasn't, you know, obviously he was an all-American at Ohio State and everything, but you look at his career path and just how he always had to grind it out. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, he was one of the boys and one of the guys in New England, but they had a lot of great players in that team, too, and he was always just that grinder. And I think that the type of culture that we have on this team, we talk about all the time. Like, it don't really matter when you got drafted, how high, how much money you make, and all this other stuff. It's all about what you do when you get here. Mm -hmm. And just being around it for the, you know, the three days in minicamp, bro, like, it was very, very competitive. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of culture that you want. And honestly, personally, I wouldn't say I prefer, but I like to go in the year with everybody doubting us. Be like, oh, y'all just going to suck this year. Because mm -hmm. it was like that for the longest us being on the team. What, what we always do, we until, always until very recently. overachieve. Exactly. Yeah. We always overachieve, and we kind of always, uh, I don't want to say live those expectations, because the expectation that we was going to suck, but we obviously always over overachieve. So I kind of feel that building up as far as just the mentality of the team, the culture of the team is that, you know, we're obviously going to be underdogs. Nobody's wishing us and, you know, saying we're going to win this. I remember 2019, the year we went to the AFC Championship game, who was the offseason darlings? It was the Cleveland Browns. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like, bro, Cleveland Browns picked them in the Super Bowl. They're going to the Super Bowl. First game of the year, we destroyed them. So I just think that just the mentality of our team, it doesn't really matter when guys get drafted, how they got on the team, whether it's undrafted, whether we sign them during, it don't matter when we sign them. Like, it's all about what you do when you get here. And I think that guys like myself, Derek, Jeff, just the culture of the guys that we have, the best players practice the hardest. We work the hardest. We put in the most time. Everybody buys into that. So I don't think it matters about... Because we all know, bro, if you're in the NFL, you're, you're talented. Mm -hmm. Like, we're all talented. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Some guys don't have the name. I was a guy that didn't have no name. I was a third round pick from Middle Tennessee State, and look where I am now. Mm -hmm. Like it's not about what you, what you did before you was here. It's all about what you do when you get here and why you're here. So, um, I'm, I'm confident this year, honestly, bro. Like, and at the end of the day, I put it on my shoulders too. Like, like we're gonna be good this year. I had to play well. Yeah. The best players have to play well for us to be great. That's just the bottom line. So good verbalism. Real talk. And but yeah. it's just real though. Like yeah, it is. Gotta play well. Like any year that we was really good, all our best players play great. And so you can't expect to be good and our best players don't play well. So for myself, for Derek and, and Jeff, we all have lofty goals personally. But as a team, you know what I'm saying? We have to carry this team because this team isn't gonna go anywhere without its leaders. So that's my mentality. Yeah. We appreciate you coming on. It's been fucking over two hours, man. Yeah, and it's flown by, too. Oh, yeah. Flown by. It's yeah. been a hell of a pod. We'll have to get you back on again. For sure. Maybe nah, middle of the season or I was the season. season. guys when I first got on here about the fact it took y'all so long to bring me back on here. I felt a little way about it. Well, oh, hang on. Well, we, can talk to us. we can talk to yeah, us. Yeah, we, we can talk. Uh, it sounds like, the, sounds like, sounds like right? communication yeah. was like I didn't know you wanted to come on. No, no, no. no. I'm not talking about just this offseason. I'm talking about over the years. Okay. It's been a while. Yeah. You know, it was, on, it was on the first couple of pods, you know? Yeah. Some some guys had double-backed. Yeah. Some guys have double-backed. Recurring. The recurring guys. Recurring, recurring yeah. guys. And I was yeah. just waiting for you guys to, you know, I was waiting for that call. You know, this is like, you know, I went first team all pro. You guys didn't call me. Yeah. Well, we didn't want to think, we didn't want you to think we were just asking because all of a sudden you made first team all pro. I feel you. We're all about being friends here. And I did, and if you want to talk about, you know, calling, I did call in March. We talked about how I called in March. And you did. And you said, I'll get, back to you. I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you, and here we are. It was a little spicy. So it was like, spicy. You know what? spicy news going on. That is true. I feel you. You're one of the OGs, and it's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. we put in the effort to get you back on the bus. So I can I can respect you. you I don't want to sound bitter right or salty, because I'm, really, nah, I'm really just teasing this guy. This business I, for you. I, I understand you, but, you're checking us right now. We Yeah, but I just had to let that be known. I wouldn't have felt, you know, leaving the pod, wouldn't have felt good with myself. I just didn't put that out there in the air. That's fair. Yeah, I'm one of the original boys, you know. You like, are. There's no question. I got on the pot. Y'all went this way. <laughs> just like, yeah. this way. Yeah. It, it, was, way. it wasn't <laughs> quite the ascent. <laughs> we'll get you back on, dude. You can no, come on whenever not. you want. Come on, man. One whenever of the boys. You want. Nah, for real, you know we appreciate all the transparency in this conversation and everything. Like this was, this was a fucking good nah, time. That was man. dope, man. Appreciate you, boys, yeah, man. man.